All right, sounds good. All right. What's up, guys? We are live. So we have a really good debate for you today. We got Michael Sartain and Marcus Wolf. Both are semi-regulars of the channel. You guys know them. I think this is going to be good. You guys are used to seeing a bunch of shit show debates on this channel where there's a dude in a leash arguing with some other crazy motherfucker and screaming at each other. This is not going to be like that. This is going to be an actual intellectual discussion slash debate. Where we're going to talk about game. There's not going to be any weird like fucking screaming or people crying or babies dying or whatever. None of that is going to happen. It's going to be a good, uh, solid discussion between two guys who I legitimately respect. And I think both have a really solid game but they pursued in different ways. So um, I think the best way to kick this off would be for you, Marcus, to do an intro uh, and uh, basically explain what, because we're going to be discussing two things. We're going to be discussing social circle game versus cold approach. And the second thing we're going to be discussing is uh, natural game versus more structured game, which is kind of what you teach. You teach a combination of natural and structured game, uh, Marcus. So um, yeah, so I think it would be a good idea for you to kind of outline your thoughts on social circle game and also on uh, natural game, and just list out any disagreements you have with Michael when it comes to his philosophy, his teaching, or his concepts. Cool, sounds good. Um, I mean, firstly, I'm disappointed there's no one at Choker here. I um, was looking forward to that in the debate, but that's fine. Um, <laughs> he's a little he's a little quiet. Can you, hold on, Mark, I'm having a little trouble. Can you turn him up? Is yeah. there any way? Yeah, I'm going to turn him up. Say something. Sorry. Uh, how's that? A little quiet. Can you, hold on, Mark, I'm having a little trouble. Can you turn him up? Can you hear me? No, no, no. Yeah, you're good now. I'll, I'll also turn down Michael a little bit to balance it out. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, essentially my views on this is that social circle game is pretty good and effective, but I think it requires a certain level of foundational skills. And so the way I see it, if I have a beginner student that is like too late count, wants to get good with women, eventually wants to like land a relationship, then I think social circle game is actually really awful at teaching those skills that are required. Because it, uh, oh, it's turned me up. All right. Um, because essentially, I think you, uh, th there's a few things. Number one, um, it's the for a certain type of good goal, which might not be the goal you're after. Number two, it reinforces what I would consider negative traits. So I, I would consider maybe becoming a little bit supplicating, a little bit nice guy. It reinforces that. It doesn't allow you to take risk, which I think is really important in developing skills in the beginning. Um, and it requires a lot of time to, upkeep and might not be transferable to if you met a girl at work or uh, met her in a cafe or you went and traveled and was you know just holidays and meeting someone so I think if you have good skills or you're a promoter and you're like into this anyway and you're into networking and creating a social circle um, or you're really good at game then it's amazing I just don't think it's good for teaching beginners okay cool uh let's let uh, Michael respond to that yeah, so uh, I actually disagree, Marcus, because I don't think anyone's ever taught social circle game before me. I think it's been taught incorrectly or whatever people have been teaching is not actually social circle game. Uh, to going back to, uh, to what we we're saying before, like, so for instance, for, for my whole program, the social circle game, it starts like this. The first thing is we fix your Instagram, create a hot list, identify high status events, and then choose female teammates for you to do that with. You go step by step in doing it. And most of my client, most of my students are very, very new and have unbelievable success. In fact, Marcus, I'd say the majority of my clients are people who took pickup courses and had a horrible, horrible, horrible result from them. Uh, the majority of my clients come from that situation. And many of them who don't have very good game, what they do is they come into my program and they learn how to become immersed around a lot of women. So what happens is, for instance, in the US military, they fire live rounds at you if you're in the infantry. They put you behind a berm and then you, they fire live rounds at you. At first, it's very exciting. And after a while, you become used to it. I teach my clients how to become very, very used to being around stunningly beautiful women so that they are incredibly calibrated when they're around it. And that's not conjecture. I can show you hundreds of clients that have done this before. And most of them were newbies in the beginning. So I, while I understand the misunderstanding, uh, that's absolutely indefatigably not true people who are not and the other thing you said is it takes more time cold approach takes more time than social circle if done correctly that's the thing cold it, it's almost like buying a certificate of deposit in a bank it consistently gives you interest over time and that's what good social media does when you say social circle that means social media social circle means social media so we teach you how to make to curate your social media so that it's constantly attracting women for you while you're not having to do any work and again if you'd like we could probably spend the next half hour and I could show you client after client after client after client after client that was able to accomplish this easily and almost all of them were beginners. 
Okay, cool. So we're now getting into the open uh, open panel part of this discussion. So uh, you guys can just go back and forth. Uh, I will only step in if one person is getting repeatedly interrupted, can't get a word in, which I doubt will happen. So have at it. Cool. Um, yeah, so I mean, we can get into the time to, to in a second, but I want to go back to that whole idea of immersion with hot women. Mm -hmm. Because I think um, if I, I, I'm just trying to have a real client in mind here, right? So if we have a client, mm -hmm. Bob, He's too late count, he's pretty awful with women, he's a bit of a loser, doesn't have many friends. Your typical, what you'd consider like a pickup client, right? Or can, like can we make it? Can we make him like 4'11"? Why don't we make him like 4'11"? Can we do that? Let's make him short okay. too. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to think of like the average guy, right? So if you want to oh, make I him mean, like- we, I mean, we, we can do the below brand. average, we can do the below average guy too if you wanted. We could yeah, do yeah, that, we could do the below average guy. Why don't we yeah, do yeah, that? I, Let's do the below average guy. Sure, below average. Um, but I think if we think about like majority of students or clients that are coming to us, right? Uh -huh. I think if they just happen to get good um, around not being nervous around hot women, I don't think that equates to being good with women. It's one no, but thing, that like, is one of the so things many... that can equate. Yeah, it's one, one of the things. things but that I think helps. there's so many guys that I think everyone here watching this can think of that is probably comfortable around a hot girl, but isn't good with them. We can think of promoters, sure. we can think of photographers, we can think, I used to be a male nurse, right? I had many friends that were like in nursing that were around hot girls all the time, awful with women, comfortable, they could be their friend, but awful with women. So I think if the main objective is some form of immersion therapy, which Pickup does anyway, right? Maybe not the best with all the I don't, programs. No, uh, Marcus, I'm then, sorry, Pickup does, not, Pickup does not immerse you around hot women. Pickup immerses you around women at, at bungalow in Santa Monica. Women pickup does not, Marcus, if you came to excess in, in, in Las Vegas, you would not be able to get on stage with the hot women. I'm sorry. I don't know you because I'm on there every week. Pickup does not immerse you with hot women. It does not. Cold or social circle immerses you with hot women. So you're saying that hot women are only on the stage? No, I'm saying the majority for immersion for like a majority, a, a significant amount of hot women. Yes, you need to be. Uh, uh, on, being on stage is the way you are significantly around hot women on a regular basis. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, but yes. I, I think to argue that the, that's the only way you can be around hot women is crazy. You can just go to yoga. No, of course, no, of course, it's of course it's not. You again, you're, 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 you again Marcus, you're gaslighting me. That's not what I said for the third <laughs> wait, time. Wait, I did not say uh, that's the only way. I did not say that's the only way. Let, let, let him finish though, and then you can respond. Okay. Yeah, I, I think there's multiple ways to immerse yourself. I agree. Agree. If you can get, I'm glad we agree. Okay, well, let me finish. If I can agree that if you can get guys into a party with 100, 500 super hot women, yes, they're going to be immersed around hot girls, right? Of course. But I think that's a lot of effort if that is just your goal to immerse people around hot girls. I think pickup immerses you around hot women anyway. You can go to a club, you can go to yoga class, you can do all of that. And for honestly, for a beginner, if you're picking like an under average 411 brown guy, He's probably not after a 10 anyway. I think he's going to be super happy if he manages to get like a girl that is an eight, that respects him, that he's super nice, that isn't on Instagram all the time, that isn't trying to get to all these bikini parties, someone that just respects him and he's like cool around him, right? So I don't think like this argument of you have to be around 500 hot girls to be good with women fits, right? I, I just don't see how that would be like your main objective. Beautiful. Because you can, if you can bench press 300 pounds, you can bench press 200 pounds. So for my thing is, if you are comfortable around really attractive women, which one more time, I, I do not think pickup gets you really comfortable around attractive women because pickup doesn't put you around as much attractive women as cold approach as social circle does. Social circle puts you around more attractive women more frequently than cold approach period. And I can show you, we can go photo for photo. If you want, there's no argument. So if you're doing so, if you're more comfortable around tens, then when you're around an eight, you're not going to be uncomfortable at all. And the four eleven brown guy, let's just you want, let's just pull up the four eleven brown guy because I got a bunch of them in my in my in my uh, group that do really really well with women that have I no mean, we, problem at all. <laughs> okay, sorry. You, you want to do that? We can we can no, do this no, all day. I, I don't if you want. think there's a need for us to like pull up photos of students around hot women or not. See, I, I the, think thing is, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, the thing is, Marcus. I think there is. I think there is a need for us to pull up student uh, photos of students. I think there is because I mean, look, I, is, I'm agreeing with you that if you put a. Yeah. Uh, a brown 411 dude around hot women over time he will eventually get more comfortable like i don't think anyone needs to see photos of a brown guy with an instagram photo around hot women i think we can all yeah but you're that. saying that it's right. a lot of work to get him there and i'm telling you it's not 
it's not well we can talk we can talk about the work that goes into social circle versus cold approach in a second but just on that point of like lifting 300 pounds versus 200 pounds i don't think that's quite an accurate analogy right because i i think it's more lifting 300 pounds and now trying to squat i think there's a lot of guys that are going to be after different things and so if you're a guy that's just after like some instagram girls or girls that like attend these parties then that's one thing and if you'll just want to be comfortable around them that's another thing now if you actually want to be you know changing who you are as a person becoming actually more dominant more self-aware more socially aware be able to actually manage relationships actually get good with women not just like comfortable around or immersed around them then i think you need something more like cold approach that can actually give you the ability to fuck up and actually teach you these skills wait, i don't michael, understand how before, that's gonna wait michael real quick before you uh, you respond i kind of took it for granted that everyone knew these terms uh, but i think we should quickly explain it for the normies so michael can you explain what social circle game is and marcus you can really quickly explain what cold approach is Perfect. yeah so so social circle game it, it comes from the concept of networking as an evolutionary adaptation so it come when i use, when i talk about social circle game because i'm the only person who's ever taught it this way is the idea of evolutionary psychology the way that dr david buss teaches it homo sapiens were created to have networks and the people who had the strongest networks had the most access to resources so for instance the leader of the tribe so one of the things we teach in men of action is leadership. I'm a retired US military officer. I fought in Iraq and Afghanistan. I teach leadership qualities to the guys in my program. That's part of the social circle that I teach, which is why when he was saying before that social that cold approach teaches you leadership and those things. No, social circle teaches you leadership more than cold approach does. The, what, what I'm saying before is in the concept of social circle, it is bringing people together. The main concept is it comes from evolutionary psychology, the concept of mate choice copying. Mate choice copying is the idea that in a two gender species, when men are surrounded by more women, more women find them attractive. We found this in several two gender species, but especially amongst homo sapiens. So what we do is because in social circle, we teach men in order to be comfortable around women to have female teammates. The female teammates get them access to different locations. They calibrate them to other uh, females. And most importantly, they introduce them to other women those things allow them to be able to meet more attractive women quicker and easier by doing less work, not more work. And that's what social circle is. Social circle is people connecting to other people and the, the network grows exponentially without you doing much work. So people who are really good at social circle, all their friends meet their girlfriends through them. All their friends get their jobs through them. All their friends meet their mentors through them. All their friends get their sponsors through them. Several of their friends will find their employees through them. And that's what I am. I'm a connector of people. It's not just about dating. It's about all areas of life. It's the reason why I can get big guests on my podcast. It's the reason why I get invited on big podcasts is because I use social circle in order to be able to do that. And that's what I teach my clients. Well, you did make it on PWF, so it must be working. Yeah, uh, so got, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> in, in, a, in a nutshell, it's uh, networking with successful people or hot girls, I think. That's kind Correct. of Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Really yeah, I think for a lot of guys wondering, yeah, it is essentially, Michael, you can correct me if you're wrong, but setting up a network where you can invite like hot girls to your parties or to like other people's parties, you you were one of the only males there or like, you know, there's there's less of you. They see you as we like- We want like a, seven um, to one. Exactly. Seven, seven right? to one so is really usually what we show. Seven, yeah. They see you as like an authority at the party, which builds attraction. You hopefully close the girls that way, right? Um, now, cold approach is going to be a little bit different in that it's cold, right? So you see a hot girl, or you see a girl that you're into, you want to talk to, you're going up to it fresh. Now, obviously, I, I don't think there's any disagreement here. If you had a choice of a girl seeing you at a party with 50 girls really into you, and you're the only guy there, it's going to build more attraction. But that's not my argument. My argument is what builds the skills to make you good with women as a beginner. So cold approach allows you the opportunity to fuck up over and over again. I can have that average student go up and actually practice being a little bit more loud. He can practice going for the clothes, going for the kiss. If you're in a social circle situation where you've spent six months building up this circle, building up these friends, think about it essentially being in a gym, right? Or being in a, um, in a school. If you fuck up there, you do the wrong thing, you make the wrong move, then you have negative pre-selection. So that's where it becomes an issue. And that's where guys tend to be a little bit more safe. They tend to be a little bit more nice. They come off as very friendly. Um, so that um, I would say is my difference, little distinction between uh, the two. Yeah, the just two. to quickly summarize, cold approach is approaching a girl on the street, at a bar, at a park that you don't know, 
um, you know, and uh, striking up a conversation with her and maybe getting a date or pulling her. Okay. Sure. Anyway, now we find that. Let's met, let Michael respond because he's going to respond to her earlier point. There. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. So, so again, Marcus, it's not anything that anyone else got wrong. It's just that no one's taught social circle correctly before ever uh, because they just didn't understand the concept. I host the three biggest bikini competitions in the world and Bulzarian asks me to bring girls to his events. So I backward rationalized or I, I reverse engineered what men who were doing really well with women did. And then that's where I came up with these concepts. So one of the things I did is I would ask numerous really, really, really attractive women. I would say, hey, the last five guys you had sex with, I didn't ask them what they were attracted to because women are clueless when it comes to that. I said, the last five guys you had sex with, where'd you meet them? And they would always go, female friend, female friend, female friend, female friend, Instagram. That's where they would find them. When I asked them about dating apps, really attractive women told me, I only use dating apps in order to get guys to subscribe to my OnlyFans. Again, they would consistently, if fem super hot females would introduce super hot females to each other. My girlfriend, who is a bikini model champion, was introduced to me by two other female bikini model champions. That's how it works. Really attractive females introduce you to really attractive females. Now, going back to what you were saying before, does it allow you to fuck up? You're right, Marcus. The old way that social circle was incorrectly taught, that is correct. That's not the way that I teach it, though, because we, we include so much social media and we put people in situations where we teach them how to break rapport. But the problem is what one of the concepts that's happened is pickup teaches guys that the only way to close is by showing intent and by um, by hitting on a girl. And the reality of the situation is in social circle, so rarely do I ever have to show intent. Women show you intent because of pre-selection that you've established. And again, I have 2,000 people in my group and 600 paying clients right now that will all tell you that this concept works. And almost all of them started as beginners. So I understand where you believe what you believe, and I get it. But the way that social circle was taught previously, that definitely not the way that I teach it. It is not that way whatsoever. You absolutely can take chances. The difference, what we do is we teach compliance loops, compliance loops, which leads to, uh, uh, there's a couple things. Number one, logistics is so primary to social circle logistics. I look to my left. I could throw a football and hit the Aria. I'm on the strip in Las Vegas. Uh, Alex, you live in Brickle. Like we live where the shit is happening. Number one is logistics. Number two is, is social media. This is where pickup got it wrong. I used to have pickup coaches because I used to work for mystery back in like 20, 2008, 2009. I used to work for mystery and matador and them like back in the day but where they got it wrong is that is they wouldn't, they didn't use social media. And I would tell them all the time. I'm like, guys, you've got to start using social media. This is a way for you to show maximum amount of social proof with, a, with showing a minimum amount of effort. And Dan Bilzerian talks about this in chapter two of his book, The Setup, where you show minimal amount of effort with maximum amount of return, okay? And number three, having females that get you invited to cool places that calibrate you and introduce you to other women. This makes your, this puts your game on easy mode. That's why these things are so easy. But the idea that you don't gain a skill set is just incorrect because you have to manage large groups of women to go with you to different things. Those women then compete for you. You take them down a compliance loop and the escalation does not happen until you cross the threshold. And just so you know, Marcus, like, I do teach cold approach stuff in my program. It's just when I teach it, it's one of the deeper things in my program. The majority of my program, 98% is social circle. You do have to do some cold approach in order to meet people uh, face to face. But one of the, the secrets that I teach is when pickup started back in like say 03, there was no real social media. So the distraction of girls always being on their phone wasn't a big issue back when I was doing you know cold approach back in 19 and I'm 45 years old back then. Now it's a huge distraction. So we actually teach cold approach using social media where we actually do what's called a Snapchat open. We get the girls to connect with us on social media. So if they're going to pay attention to the phone, they're going to pay attention to us. And it creates a connection that stays permanently. And then the next thing we do is, hey, do you want to come to this charity event we caught coming up next week? Do you want to come to the bikini competition? Do you want to come to the Maxim party? And because we all share lists, we can all get all these girls into these different events. We have open threads with thousands of women. And that's the reason why this works so well. We use a, use a virtual assistant to do all of this. And it takes, you were saying like six months. I can't imagine doing this six months, 25 days at the most well, is yeah, how long I, it would I, take to do something like this. I think it's important we try to stick to like one point that we argue back and forth if we can because sure. I've, I've written down like five things that we can get to um mm -hmm. but uh let, let's start with the first one which was um where are we yeah that essentially everyone you spoke to that was super hot were introduced by a female friend or by social yes. media um mm -hmm. 
I just don't think that is true for the large majority of women. I, I think there's going to be a certain ratio where most people meet in warm spaces, right? Traditionally, before social media, before Tinder, most people met in warm spaces. You'd meet your partner at college, you'd meet at fucking yoga class, wherever you're going. I think that's fairly common that you're going to have like a, a group of friends and you're going to meet people through that and you're going to get introduced and that's fairly common. Um, yeah, but so, a group yeah, of friends, that, that is... That is social circle. Exactly. That a warm so space I, is I social do, circle. Exactly. I'm agreeing with you here, right? So I do okay, think that's very it. normal. I think there's also a large proportion of people that are meeting through dating apps. That's definitely on the rise. I think it's very, very rare for if you just speak to someone to be like, yeah, I met my boyfriend. He came up and approached me in the club or he approached me during the day. Just because most guys don't have the balls to actually do a cold approach. Oh. I think if you go out to the club, you basically might see some drunk guys going around being like, hey, you're hot. But to actually go to a club and find someone that has learned cold approach and is applying it and um and using those techniques i think is rare so i'm not surprised at all i don't think this is the indication that oh because this is how the community is meeting each other right now and it's the largest proportion that this is the best way and this is how we would do it um i, I just don't think that stands let me just quickly clarify this because this is kind of my thought i had because i i agree with both of you but i think the big thing is that uh, you guys live in totally different parts of the world. So, Michael, what you're saying, I believe, is true in Vegas. And, Marcus, what you're saying, I believe, is true in Europe and Australia. Uh, I do think there's a different culture element that's important to keep in mind. But anyway, I'll do you guys Yeah, and that's that. actually that's a good point that I'll, I'll bring up as well. I think there is a selection bias with um, with social circle games. So, uh, depending how you're running it, of course. But with Cold Approach, I can go out to a library. I can go out to a cafe and meet a certain type of girl. I can go out to a club and meet a certain type of girl. But if I'm an average student that's maybe looking for a little bit of an introvert, you're not going to find that in social circles. Social circle requires you to find girls that are wanting to go to parties, that are wa like wanting to increase their Instagram, that are wanting to meet more people. And then not only that, but then you need to find a girl that's willing to make a move on you, right? Because essentially social circle, a lot of the time what gets taught is not actually showing too much intent, not making the move. It's waiting for the girls to come to you. So now you're selecting for girls that are a little bit more dominant in that space that are actually like going for what they want. Um, so I think that is one of the issues I have with social circle as well for a beginner. Oh, uh, no, I, I don't believe the introvert part. Like the, so one of the things you have to understand is because you see the bikini competitions, I throw like 27 different types of events when I'm doing an animal rescue, like the one I'm doing the day after tomorrow, a lot of the girls that are coming there are there because they want to help rescue animals, not because they're extroverted or because they're trying to grow their social media. But because how do I do them? one that uh, we find them on social media, we find them on, on Instagram, but like what, what you're going to tell me next is that hot girls aren't on Instagram. No, that's not what I'm going to say. It? I'm going to okay, say right. that this is very much, I mean, we have to be commonsensical here. This is very yeah. much still going to select for girls that are wanting to attend these events through social media. They're getting hit up by guys, right? I think that, and most of these events, to be honest, um, when I've spoken to your students, when I've spoken to other guys doing social circle, it's not animal rescue events, right? Most of them are going to be some photography type thing. It's going to be some modeling type thing. It's going to be connecting people up that way. Um, that's what I've heard. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I've heard yeah, from the students that's I've spoken to yeah. from most people doing social Yeah, so it's, so we do, we do six babes in Toylands a year. Two of them are for domestic abuse. One of them, two of them are for animal rescue. And then we do the model citizen fund, which is we build pack packs for homeless people. We do uh, smash global, which is an anti-bullying charity. The vast majority of my events are for charity. Yeah. So these it's, it's charity events, who are you hitting up? Like if I'm one of your students and you're saying, okay, Marcus, uh, you're running a charity event. Who am I messaging mm -hmm. on Instagram? We're messaging everyone. It just like, we're everyone messaging girls. What do you want? I, I, like when you say What's everyone, I'm just thinking like, what do you mean by everyone? I literally hit up. So, so, so we're, we're not, yeah, we're not, we're not just picking girls that have large social media followings. We're picking girls that are physically attractive. So how do you find and, the physically attractive girls on social media? Beautiful. Good, dude, great question, man. So that's going to be Thank step you, number two question. in the Men of Action course, if you guys want to check on the free server. Step number two is called build your list. And a couple things you're going to do. First, you're going to go through a girl that is your perfect archetype, and you're going to look at who she follows. And that's how you're going to build a list. We usually use Google Sheets, and then we're going to have four uh, columns. One is first name, last name, email, and then we do Instagram. On, usually start with the Instagram one. You're going to copy and paste all the Instagrams of people that are like the, the girl that you like. So you're going to look for your archetype. Mm -hmm. It's not. So one of the misconceptions is that 
we go in Vegas and every girl there has big fake tits and they're an escort on OnlyFans. It's not like that at all. We, we find very, like a, a huge spectrum of girls, especially when I do like a charity of all, like for instance, the teddy ball we do in San Diego, the teddy ball, we bring teddy bears for homeless children and for children that are in um, hospice, girls, uh, children that are like in the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We actually collect toys for those children. It's usually super attractive social media influencers that help us raise money and help us collect donations for those things. That's yeah. the majority of my content is what it comes from things like that. That's where you so see me on the microphone. So what? essentially, right, if I'm a guy that wants to get immersed with hot girls, I could just go to these charity events, right? Yes, which is social circle, yes. Yeah, but but I could just go not running any social circle at all, right? Mark, is, Marcus, not only not Marcus, not only could you go. I'm personally inviting you to all no, of them. No, not me. I'll bring not you me. every single one of them. Remember, no, Marcus, remember, I want to get I'm you to come. Eleven Brown guy. I'm a four eleven Brown okay. guy. When I say me, okay, that's um, fine. Because th this is my point. If you're just inviting anyone with any social media following, um, and it's just like some hot girls that you think might want to go, then yeah. essentially, right, all you're doing is setting up a club environment, right? Like, the, I could just go and get immersed with these hot girls anyway. I don't understand what the question is. My, it's not a question. So if, you're, if you're saying what that I'm, I'm selecting is, for attractive women, then the answer is yes. I can understand if you're saying, okay, bikini babes competition, and we're just going mm -hmm. and we're really selecting. It has to be someone that's like modeling. It's someone that really wants to get this. They're super hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, they have a high social media following. They go into these events. But if you're organizing like a, um, a charity event for dogs, I think you, you mentioned it was. I wasn't familiar. Yeah, it's Animal it, Rescue. It's, it's this Thursday. Animal Rescue. Yeah. Perfect, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you're just inviting like any girl that essentially is into Animal Rescue. Um, then my question is like, what is going to be different than from if I just went to a club with hot girls in it, or I went to a yoga uh, class? Great, great, great question. So, so most clubs don't have a lot of hot girls, and this is a big difference between Europe and the United States. The average woman in the United States is 171 pounds. We have a severe obesity problem in this country. So we, so when you say what do we select for, we select when you're saying do we select for introverted, extroverted, social media, big following, small following, young or old. The only thing we select for is physical attraction. So like these are the girls coming to Babes in Toyland on Thursday and like like I have hundreds of girls that have signed up. These girls are all there for animal rescue. The only thing they have in common is that they were physically attractive and they're there for animal rescue. Some of them like this girl right here, she has a PhD in pharmacology. She's very introverted, but she also happens to be a Maxim model. So that's the, that's the thing. This girl right here is also very introverted. She uh, she has a master's degree. Like we, it's not we don't select for girls based on do they have a so large social media following. We select for girls one are they physically attractive, and two do they want to help us with Foster Friday Foundation, which helps all the homeless animals that are in Clark County. This is the majority of what I teach as far as. Wait, Michael, are you trying to share your screen right now? Yeah, I'm sorry. Is it not sharing? No, you gotta give me a heads up. Yeah, I can. Oh, sorry, I my can... bad. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I can. Cool. If you want to bring it back, I can add it to the stream. Yeah, I got you. See right there? Yeah, yeah, you're good now. Yeah. So, like these these girls that are coming to the Foster Friday Foundation situation, this is the charity that we're doing on Thursday, right? And it's uh, some of them are older, some of them are younger, some of them have regular professions. Like I said, we have one girl with a PhD in pharmacology and another girl who does OnlyFans. Like it doesn't make any difference. We're just inviting, we're creating a situation to where there's two or three really attractive girls for every guy in these situations. That's what my events end up becoming, right? This girl has, uh, she's a, a marriage and a family therapist. Like a lot of these girls are Maxim models and a lot of these girls are just regular girls that wanted to come help us raise money for animal rescue. But the point is, and then this, obviously this is my girlfriend. The point of this whole situation is the point of the entire situation is that we wanted to create a situation where there's a massive ratio of girls compared to guys, which allows it, makes it easier for you. The setup, that's what, again, uh, that's what we try to create is a setup to where you have, again, if you want to get better at basketball, you play in the NBA. You don't play in the G whoa, League. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I, no, you don't. Hang on, hang on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. If I am a beginner to basketball and I'm an average sure. guy, I'm not going to yes. learn shit in the NBA. I'm going to no, go but to you the would, NBA but, but you you can No, but you can train and you can get better with better competition. I so that you and I are going to disagree on, on this cuz I can just yeah. show you ultimate examples. If I throw a guy in to the deep end with really attractive women, I can make him better with really attractive women. The reason why Pickup has never been able to teach this is because Pickup does not give you access to the Playboy Mansion or backstage at the Maxim party. If you do that on a regular basis, you'll find that those dudes are just better with attractive women Yo, because they're I, more I regularly you, around attractive women. I guarantee you, if you take let's put some money on it. If you money take on it, let's do it. Let's do some money on it. Let's pick a guy. 
yo, yo, let me finish. If you take a below average guy and just throw him around hot women, he's not going to learn to get good with hot women. Like you, you gave the analogy of the NBA example, right? If you just Mm -hmm. throw me in the NBA and are like, go for it. I'm never going to learn shit. If I actually am a beginner to basketball and I want to learn, then what I should do is start off at the beginner level, have a really good coach teaching me the foundational skills, having the ability Mm -hmm. to fuck up. Now, if I go to the NBA and you give me the ball to make a shot, right? There's so much pressure there. I'm just going to do the shot that I'm always used to. I'm not going to practice what my coach told me, which might've been instead of throwing the ball fucking underarm because I don't know what I'm doing is actually like add a little bit of a flick to it, which I'd never try in the NBA, right? I, I'll just do what I'm used to. So yeah. cold approach actually allows you that ability to fuck up, to practice, to learn, to get better. But if you put me in a party with a bunch of 500 hot girls and I'm an average or below average guy, then I'm going to be so worried about fucking it up, especially if these are the girls that are going to be at the same parties over and over again, right? That's something I'm really going to be worried about. I'm not going to be able to take my shot or practice anything new. So I think the idea of like putting someone in the NBA when they're a beginner is crazy. I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Okay. So then you don't like the NBA analogy. The analogy would be to take them to Babes in Toyland in Miami, where they're around a lot of very beautiful women. And all of them come up to me and be like, this was an incredible experience. And I, and I learned a lot. Okay, so if I just take... Maybe, we won't use analogy, just take, we'll just use specifics. No, no, let's use specifics. So if yeah. I give you one of my students, right? He's just come mm-hmm. to me last week. His name is Bob. We're going back to Bob, the okay. <laughs> four, foot 11 or whatever, you know, normal height um, guy that's horrible with women and you throw him in this party. Like what, what is going to happen? What, what is he going to yeah. do? How is he going to learn? Beautiful. So, so he would start at the beginning of the course. Was step number one, we go over breaks and rapport. So we go over ways. We make them uh, talk about themselves. We treat them all the same, make them talk about themselves. These are concepts that we have. And we also have the concept of value arbitrage, connector, suggester, and content creator. Connector in order to build connections. And then we also go over logistical questions. There's a bunch of stuff that where we actually do teach guys how to talk to women in these situations and then build connections and then group big groups of girls, one group of girl with another group of girls, and we're connecting them together. So one of the main things that creates attraction from a guy who is very average is the ability to create pre-selection. So one of the things is I usually have my guys show up with six or seven girls whenever they come to these parties. And that is something I can teach a beginner. That is absolutely Marcus, $10,000 right now. I'm sorry. $10,000. It might be very different because I guarantee you, I guarantee you every guy in pickup that is a beginner that would go to this party, would, they mm-hmm. would have so much negative pre-selection. It would be crazy. Okay. No, but that's, but, but let's, that's because we teach them, right? We teach them how to show up with girls. You, Marcus, you're, you're maybe you can give a, an example of what a beginner looks like to you because you guys yeah. might be defining it differently. Yeah. So a beginner to me is someone that's a little bit, I mean, awkward around women, right? So if I put mm-hmm. him in front of a girl and they had a 20 minute conversation, that girl at the end of it, if I went and got feedback would say, yeah, look, this guy seems very shy. He doesn't seem sure of himself. Um, the conversation didn't really flow. Um, it just felt a bit awkward, right? Like sure. that's how a girl would describe them. Now, if you want like traits from the guys, I mean, Alex, I mean, it, we, you've done a lot of speed dating on this channel, right? Like, I think if you take the average guy from there, right, look at the feedback that he's getting, look at the type of uh, traits that he has. I think you could, you know, if you want to use well, that. Let's, let's, take, let's, guy, let's, right? let's take a beginner guy. So what is with a speed dating, what a beginner guy looks like, it's either like 30 seconds in, he says, I can't do this anymore. And I have to like come in and give him like a mini therapy session because uh, he's on the verge of like having a panic attack. Or he says something really weird and cringy that creeps the girl out. And that's like totally not calibrated. Like, so um, hmm, do the tits match the, sh- the the sweater? Like some weird shit that makes no sense. Uh, that's what a beginner would look like. Uh, and I would say a uh, vast majority of people who do my speed dates are either beginners or intermediates. It's very, very rare that I see someone who's competent and can actually like do well. It's maybe 10% of the time, but yeah. Yeah, no, my, my whole thing was uh, there's ways of being able to get large groups of girls to go with you to these different these events so they don't have negative pre-selection. And those things don't, those aren't like, they aren't pickup techniques. You're like, I'm not fucking all six girls. There's yeah, ways of getting if, girls. Sorry to interrupt. If I took, um, yeah, if I took one of my students, right? Well, even dude, I, I mentioned I used to be a nurse, right? Like you could even use me as an example back in the day. Like I could rock up to clubs with six hot girls around me 
But again, like I might get girls looking over, I might even get them approaching me sometimes, but I'm going to fuck up that conversation. And once they find out that all these girls aren't actually attracted to me at all, they're just like friend zoned me, even worse, even worse, if they feel like the girls that are friend zoned him are just using him to get to like a party, then that's even worse negative pre-selection. I've seen this, I've seen this a lot, right? Like even in Poland recently, there's guys here that run social circle. I've, every girl that I've slept with in Poland that have gone to these parties, laugh at these guys behind their back. And once again, I'm not saying the social circle doesn't work. I've used it and it's fucking incredible, but you need a really good foundation. And I think for a lot of these beginners, they just don't have it. Yeah, I think I think the confusion is that you think that we wouldn't teach a foundation on how to talk to women or that you couldn't screw well, up. Essentially, think, that's what I'm asking, right? So the, yeah. the argument here is like, what's more effective to learn to be good with women, right? I just, I, I completely agree with you that the environment is going to be much better at a party with 500 girls. Like if you have the mm -hmm, time yeah. to put in, like I would love to put in more time in social circle. I've done a lot of it. Um, I've had a lot of great experiences from it. But again, like for me, I'm traveling a lot. It's time consumptive. But the argument here is, what actually teaches you more? Now, I'm not saying that it teaches you nothing, right? You you take Alex's students that are doing these speed dates, put them around 500 hot girls. They probably, as you said, they get a bit immersed. They'll probably become a little bit more comfortable. But what do you do to get them to the point where they're actually able to close these girls, have relationships with them, keep them around? Um, because right now, the techniques that I've kind of heard is like building a little bit of rapport. You're kind of introducing them to other people, maybe inviting them to other events. I'm wondering where does the skills about actually building attraction with these girls come, being more dominant, understanding yourself better, dealing with objections, um, having retention. Like that's what I kind of want to understand because it doesn't seem like that is taught or is it like a focus i mean you mentioned it's two percent of what you teach or what what the game is right no uh so yeah if you want to go over the course it's 114 modules long the the parts about the the events in the social circle part are like that's two of the 10 uh modules we actually go over leadership and attraction triggers and things like that that's so, very so very how, how do you program. say game is only two percent then because, uh, no, no, no. by the way, correct me if I'm wrong. I thought I heard that in one of your. Uh, no, no. Uh, what, you, what you heard before, which, what I said before is cold approach is 2% of game. That living a cool life where you get into better physical shape, you learn to dress well, you have a deeper voice. Like when you start saying, um, when you start saying, have a dominant personality, have a better speaking voice, that's not cold approach to me. That's not. That's that's social circle. No, no, social circle it, is working on it. Okay. These are, these are two different methods to. Yeah. Learn game essentially is what you're saying. So for me, uh, cold approach, once again, is the most effective way to learn those skills. And I don't see how just throwing someone with a bunch of old girls is teaching them. So I'd love to know what you essentially what you're telling me, correct me if I'm wrong. Essentially, what you're teach, telling me is, yo, I'm teaching them all the cold approach skills. I'm teaching them game. It's just going to be an environment with more girls. Yeah. So, so you, so what you're doing is you're bastardizing it and saying that those are cold approach skills. Like setting boundaries is not a cold approach skill. That is not a unit that may be a skill in game, but you don't get to just like, okay, win let, that let's, one call in, in let's, divorce call game, let's call them game skills. And I would cool. say these game skills are better learnt in cold approach. I don't, I don't think setting, circle. yeah, I don't think setting boundaries is better learnt in cold approach than in, in a social circle situation. I don't think leadership I, is better I, learned in cold approach than a social circle situation. I would argue majority of game skills a better learn in a cold approach environment where cool. you have the ability to fuck up where mm -hmm. um you can yeah, you just keep thinking we don't have the ability to fuck up in these environments well well okay let's set a scenario right you're at babes okay. of what, what's it called sorry it's called babes event? in toyland charity yep. babes in toyland okay so if you're at that party and you escalate on a girl and she finds it weird and creepy which is going to happen as a beginner even for myself right mm -hmm. yeah and then she's going to be able to talk to that social circle, right? Now, yeah. Are, are exactly you physically happen, escalating? Especially are you physically? Uh, as a beginner, I don't teach this, but as a beginner, probably, right? As a beginner, I'm probably yeah. verbally escalating wrong. And so we both know that's fucking wrong, terrible probably, game to physically escalate on a girl in front of her friends when you're yes. a newbie, right? And if you run terrible yeah. game, you're going to have really negative consequences in social circle, yeah. whereas cold approach, you can move on to the next set. You can move on to the next goal. You can move on to the next night. And so yeah, it I, I allows think... you to be able to take that risk and figure out, hey, I just realized escalating physically is really awful and I should never yeah, do it. Yeah, Marcus, I think that's our responsibility that. as instructors to let them know that as physically escalating in front of their friends is a really fucking, is really fucking bad game. I okay, think well, it's our responsibility there's, there's as an instructor a to do that. There's huge nuance here, we have to agree, Michael, where there's a huge nuance okay. because I think if in front of their friends, 
I'm like spanking her hand a little bit, or maybe I grab her hair as I speak into her, that physical escalation can actually be really calibrated, create a lot of attraction, turn this girl on and show a lot of dominance. So that actually is great. I can't tell the amount of girls I've pulled hair or choked in the club. Now, of course, I'm not going to teach my students that if they're a beginner, but there's- Marcus, I, I will bet you every girl you've ever choked in a club would have come, that came home with you, would have came home with you if you didn't choke her in the club. Uh, depending. Depending, I think uh, you I will say bet that you for... every single girl that you choked okay, I, in a club will, would have come on. I will with tell you, you this. If you hadn't I will tell choked you this. her. I've got feedback of girls, right? And mm -hmm. I've specifically had one girl tell me, "I decided to come home with you the minute you wrapped your hands around my throat." Now, beautiful, is, I, and, is and I believe, and I believe that she may believe that this. after, after she point. had sex with you. Yeah. Let me just finish this point. I'm okay. not sitting here and saying, okay, this magical like physical escalation did everything for me, but there's every little building block in that cold approach that's going to matter. So it might not just be the one physical escalation, but it might be me looking into her eyes a little longer than I'm used to, right? Now, mm -hmm. when I first practiced this, I had a lot of girls ask me if I'm high. They're like, have you smoked? Cause you just keep like staring at me yeah. weird. Now, if I do that in a party of 500 girls and they're like, dude, this guy keeps like staring at us and it's kind of creepy and weird. There's a real big negative consequence there. When I get girls asking me in cold approach, hey, you high, like, please leave me alone. You can just move on to the next girl, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I just think that the issue is one of these situations where I don't trust when girls say why they do things. I trust that girls, when they explain me that they do things. So what I found is, especially like I've talked to a lot of girls while I sleep with them. And then afterwards, they'll give me some reason why it happened. And I'm like, no, the reason why it happened was because of this. So I think maybe a girl was attracted Can to you, you maybe physically example? attracted to you. And then she, you choke. Yeah. Uh, I think the girl may have already been physically attracted to you. Then you choked her. Then she slept with you and backward rationalized that she's attracted to you. I'm not saying that could be it. That might not be it. What I'm saying is I don't, I don't trust women when they explain to me why they're attracted. Yeah, that's, I, that's I a think, bit of very hard rule. Rule number one is I don't. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a mistake. I, I think that you really need to get as much feedback as girls as possible. And I'll get tons of feedback. Attention to it because look, I think you need to do some decoding. I think that's what we agree on here. You need to do some translating with some girls, right? Um, because they will say one thing and kind of mean another. But there you go. Then you agree with me. Then you agree with me. Then it is translating. Yes. Let, let me finish, right? But there's skills around this. So when I actually speak to a girl and get this feedback, first thing I do is criticize her, right? I will say, mm -hmm. I didn't like this about you. Um, during sex, this would have been better. So I already put her in a position where she's not like, oh, I don't want to hurt his feelings. I don't like, I prime her to be able to give me the truth, complete feedback. And I'm not just asking what's good. I'm asking what's bad. I've had girls tell me that the physical escalation wasn't what she liked. And so, yeah, girls might come up with different reasons. But when this girl said, look, you turned me on so much. And that's the moment I decided to come home with you. It doesn't mean that she was not attracted whatsoever. Of course, she has to be attracted, right? But there's a lot of objections that you have to overcome for a girl to sleep with you. You know that. And so sure. some physical escalation is going to lead to girls maybe saying, hey, you know what? I was attracted to this guy. Maybe I wasn't going to come home with him because I was worried what my friends would think. But when he did X, Y, Z, I realized, fuck, this is going to be incredible sex. This is going to be a great night. And it might not even be like the sexual side. It could even be a compatibility side. But damn, I, I have to go home with him right now and fuck my friends, right? I don't give a shit about them. And so that's why I think it's really important not to just say, oh, girls will say certain things and blah, blah, blah. I think it's really important to get like accurate feedback from a girl and actually use that to apply into your game. And with cold approach, you can do that. You can trial new things, see if it works, see if it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, you, but you're kind of negating your own point. You're talking about me not being able to do this with a beginner, and then you're talking about choking a girl in a club, which you wouldn't. I, teach I clearly beginner. said, I clearly said, I wouldn't even teach my advanced guys. Of course, guys of course, club, of right? course. That, that's my point. That. So, so but maybe we, that's not we, the we best thing for a beginner exact, either. We cannot take that exact example, but maybe we mm -hmm. can take physical escalation. So maybe what the guy should be doing is at some point applying some physical escalation. Right? It could be a kiss on the neck. It could be leaning in and talking dirty into her ear. Right? It could be having a hand just on a lap. These are things that you should be doing in the club or even in uh, what I would argue is like my social circle events. I do this, right? So, but once again, there's a real big risk of doing this. If you're doing it in the gym, if you're doing it at your school, if you're doing it at these social circle events, there's much less risk if you go approach a girl on the street and then practice some of these techniques. So what you're saying is we should be calibrated, right? You need to learn calibration. And yeah, so you if need to you learn already have calibration, guess what? Social circle is amazing and you should do it. But if you don't have calibration, it's a really bad place to learn it.
Mm, interesting. I, I disagree. I think you can become calibrated by being around women. And actually, we're around so many women when I say like, uh, like, when but I how do you learn, right? Party, they need to, will they never make a mistake? No, they make mistakes. We make mistakes all the time. But I think what you think is that you make a mistake. You, you What you're thinking is a mistake is physical escalation, which leads to an no, ick, there's one which example. then ruins. Okay, well, let, then let's choose that one example. Physical okay. escalation, which leads to an ick. And then she tells all her friends that you're weird. I don't mm -hmm. teach beginner students to physically escalate on girls until they go in the threshold into the bedroom. You can escalate verbally, or what I actually teach girls guys to do is get women to escalate on them verbally. Not escalate like, let's go have sex, but change the conversation sexual. I, I teach ways to get girls to change the conversation sexual instead of having guys do it. And it's very easy to do. And you, you're, you're right, do you fuck up is bad? I mean, like Marcus, you're smiling, but this absolutely does work. There's a game called Never Have I Ever that you can play with a bunch of girls and they mm. turn everything sexual and you don't have to do anything. Are they fucking up? Maybe they're fucking up, but you know better than to think that if you play Never Have I Ever with a bunch of girls and one girl looks at another one and be like, yeah, I suck three dicks at the same time and starts taking a fucking drink, they turn things sexual. And so there's ways for girls to create the escalation to where you're right. It's not as much risk, but you're saying you don't fuck up. You, you can fuck up. There's a lot of things you can fuck up as far as logistics are concerned. There's a lot of things you can fuck up about as far as like you hit on this girl and then you hit on this girl. But what we teach instead is why not go to the club with seven girls, which is something that I teach people to do, then leave and come back to your place, which is right near the club with like another 14. And from there, you can learn because you're around a lot of attractive women for a long time. I think that's the way to learn, along with teaching breaks and rapport, not to qualify to other people, how to use FOMO and um, how to use FOMO and other things in order to get people to uh, to come to your events. We teach all these different concepts. Um, I'm sorry, vanity and guilt. Those were the terms that I was looking for. We use those terms. We also use pre-selection. These are different attraction triggers that we teach, along with physical fitness, along with physique, along with using social media to show that you're relevant, along with social media to show that you are um you're competent. Those are different things that we use. And those are all different attraction triggers. Those are all different scales, attributes. Like if you play FIFA or if you play Madden or some video game, like speed, acceleration, all those things, we work on every single one of them when you do social circle. And is, is it harder? Yes. Do you have to be a more complete player? Yes. But in the end, what happens with cold That's approach, what I've seen is we have a guy right here. We have a girl right here and we have a guy right here. This girl is like up on VIP on stage and he's using game and words to try to come up to her level of status. Whereas what I teach is we come up to their level of status when they meet. We meet on even ground because the social circle, I'm on the same stage she's at. I'm in the same party she's at. I'm in the same VIP she's at. I have the same friends and her friends that she, that she looks up to, they're already following me. And so from that standpoint, I don't have to use words and game to get up to her level. I'm already at her level. And that's what I teach in social circle. Yeah. And, and once again, you kind of mentioned that you need that level of foundation. And if you don't, it's not going to work. If you take someone, um, once again, I don't mean to hate on Alex's uh, uh, speed dates. I, I think hate away, hate uh, away. No, no, no. Like, to be fair, though, I think it's a great thing. Alex, can, do I, can I do one of your speed dates? I want to do one yeah, of your speed dates. Yeah, 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 you should jump on. Awesome. Um, I, love I think... Uh, I think I, I think it's a great thing he does, right? Because these guys can come on these speed dates and guess what? They can fuck up, right? They can fuck up in front of everyone and then they get feedback off the girl, they get feedback off Alex and they learn and develop. And we can see, I think Alex may have done it before and after, guys develop and improve. Now, if you take one of those guys, put him a group of girls and play Never I've Ever, he's not going to get laid, right? Unless one of those girls suddenly uh, somehow has attraction for some guy with zero calibration and just fucks him right but then what goal are you really selecting for which is not going to happen anyway yeah. i've had so many students do group pulls right from the club they sit around in the fucking living room they're having shots playing silly oh, oh sorry i won't say silly games i'll play it it's fun but playing these games right and no one's getting laid okay the girls are there for an after party there's barely any attraction for the guy it's just a bit of fun and then everyone goes home alone and the student is there thinking this is amazing i feel so validated i was at home with a bunch of hot girls and i'm sitting there being like listen you should have made a move you should have tried to make something happen you can at least learn from it right so once again, I'm arguing here the beginner and the skills that you're developing and the game that you're teaching is going to be much more efficient in a cold approach environment. I still think that I agree with you. Once you have all those skills and foundation, do social circle, it works. But up until that point, there's better ways to learn.
uh, t- this week is Vegas immersion here in Las Vegas. There's 20 of my clients are here and they're going out tonight to different clubs tonight. They're going to Omnia last night. They went to jewel tomorrow night. They're going to Encore beach club and they are going to do cold approach the whole time they're there. But the cold approach they're doing is different. It's not intent man to woman based cold approach. It's cold approach where they, they invite people to other things. They use logistical questions in doing so. And you're right. They're not taking a ton of risk, but what happens is the next night they Make go out friends. with 10 girls. The next night they go out with 20. The next night they go out with 30. And at that point, women are actually competing with each other for them. So I yeah. do think there is a skill set in creating a social circle in creating a network of, of people and getting those people to come out with you. Like if you were to look at the skill set it takes to throw an event or the skill set it takes to get six girls to go with you, the skill set it takes to get six girls to go with you somewhere requires so much compliance. It's a very difficult skill set. So it's the idea that you don't learn anything, I just don't think is true. Uh, but you, you, what you're saying is at a higher level, social, uh, social circle where work and at a, a beginner level, the problem with that is like I used to think the same thing so I started teaching this and then I just find that when these guys just do what I ask they learn so quickly because it's our responsibility as instructors to walk them through these minefields and show them what the problem is but the difference is in my the way I do it is because every week there are around 70 or 80 hot girls they get through these repetitions faster and I'm not that worried about them fucking up it's really not that big of a deal I think when you're thinking of social circle you're thinking of like one group of people that live in one area and that's the whole thing and like for instance my social circle would probably be around 5,000 people I can fuck up and it's not really that big of an issue uh, so that's that's it's not quite the the fuck up thing that you say it is. What we're, what I'm more concerned is how do you gain access? How do you get large groups of girls to go with you? How do you show competency and relevancy on social media? And then that brings more girls into your life. Okay, so what skill set are we teaching, Bob? Right. So you're mm-hmm. saying is bring six girls to the club. Mm-hmm. How is he getting those six girls to the club? Because to me, what it sounds like is you're basically making friends, right? You're making yeah. friends. And my For issue sure. with this, right? I think female friends are amazing and you should have them. But if you're actually learning to build attraction with women, right? You're mm-hmm. reinforcing these friend habits. So a lot of guys that I actually coach and see is that this is one of the problems is that they're awful with women, except when it comes to like maybe being a little bit friendly with them. So I think a lot of my students can probably get six girls to a club. Not that difficult, right? All these like people that are going and approaching on the street, they could say, hey, I've got a table here, um, organize with the uh, fucking uh, promoter and get a free table. And like they, they could do that, right? Um, mm-hmm. But then what I'm worried is you're just reinforcing these very like friendly skills as opposed to actually teaching yeah. traction skills. And so they become a bit supplicating, they become a bit too nice, they become a bit too validating and it's just reinforcing it over and over. So it's like, what are you actually teaching Bob? Because sure, he can get six girls to the club, but I don't think he's doing anything then. I don't think he's closing. Yeah, so- I think these six girls think this guy's my friend. If anything, they're probably thinking free table. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, such a great question. So the thing is, there's a big difference. And again, horrible, horrible bad dogma that was taught in the pickup industry. There's a t- complete difference between a girl friend zoning you and you friending them. Having a female friend where you tell them straight up, like I have two really close female friends, CJ Sparks and, and uh, Kindly Myers. They're both in relationships and they both, in, before when I was single, they would introduce me to girls all the time. There's no, and, and when I talk to them, I'm like, yo, what up motherfucker? There's no supplication at all. Kindly won't let me pay for shit. There's no supplication. The boundaries are clearly defined and they understand. They're very much like, uh, I used to do this all the time. I go out with a girl like, one time, uh, Babes and Toyland, like five years ago, I was talking to this one girl and I knew Kindly was like over here. So I go talk to her. She's doing like a photo shoot off in the corner or whatever. And Kindly, I just give her a nod like this. She goes up to the girl and she goes, oh yeah, you'll do. And she goes, you need to do whatever this man says. And the girl was just like putty in my hands afterwards. These girls help you with other girls because they understand they're on the same team. I'm the quarterback. She's the wide receiver. I'm the quarterback. She's the tight end. There's no friendliness or supplication boundaries are clearly defined in the men of action mentoring group absolutely under no circumstances do we supplicate we don't spend money on women either that's another thing very very important and under no circumstances do we use money to get any of these girls to come to events with us ever if you want to do it later after you're done with my program that's on you while you're in your my program you don't use money and so when you do so, what happens is the skill set they teach, Marcus, that I teach is women trust me and like me so much, they're trying to hook me up with their friends. That's yeah, dude, one I, of the skill sets. Right? Listen, uh, I, I run some social circle back in Sydney when I was there. And mm-hmm. 
uh, hosting sex parties, um, hosting pro parties, having orgies everywhere. Like th this is easy. And like, I I've got a lot of female friends that respect me as a man and will set me mm -hmm. up with their friends nonstop. I think Alex, my business Are you supplicating to them? Sydney. But you're not uh, supplicating explain, them, right? Let me explain. Let me explain. I've had my business partner, Alex, come to Sydney and he closed like four or five girls that were just my friends that were like, hey, this guy's cool. But that is us, okay? Um, without talking about too much here, you are a very attractive guy with high status, um, with a well-paying career, right? So you've, you've got your shit together and I can see, I can see the qualities that you have why women might want to be friends with you. Of course, same with me, same with Alex, but why do they want to be friends with Bob? So great. So the reason why they'd want to be friends with Bob is because Bob is a connector. So there's a great book by Malcolm Gladwell called The Tipping Point, where it talks about the term of the connector. So in every case, I teach my guys to be the person everyone gets their job through, everyone meets their partner through, everyone finds their employees through, everyone uh, everyone finds their mentors through. I'm the person people come to when they want book recommendations. That's something you can teach yeah. four foot 11 Bob. And when you do so now girls are like, I want to go to the Maxim party. I know I can go through Bob. I want to get into babes and toilet. I know I can go through Bob. I know I'm going to go with Bob and Bob's going to have 12 other girls with him. I know that when I go with Bob, shit will be handled. Bob is competent. When I go with Bob, things are taken care of and I don't have to wonder about where to go. I'm led. If you ever see me like a, when I go to Dan Fleischman's parties, I walk around and there's like 12 girls behind me and Anthony DeRico, he'll walk around. And he'll have another 12 girls behind him Again, that, because that's we you. know how that's to you. lead groups. But Anthony Bob, DeGrico, Bob five, the five foot two tall dude that I showed you in the video. The five foot uh, tall let, guy. Let's, let's be real. Um, Bob's a party planner, right? Bob got a table through. No, Bob, uh, Bob gets through invited to parties. He's and, not a party planner. Yeah. Okay. But he's, he's inviting these girls like, the, the one quality that Bob has of the girl is like access. So the girl's are like, okay, Bob can get me here. It sounds like a very easy type relationship. What I prefer is more of these qualities where it's like, you know what? Bob's really fun to hang out with, right? Now that would be one. These are the skills that I'd be teaching him in cold approach and he'd be learning quick in cold approach because he has, has the ability to fail, right? So if Bob's cool to be around, he's fun to be around, he's dominant, he speaks loud, he's got a good tonality, um, he's able to walk around the club like he owns it a little bit. Um, these are more of the qualities. He's socially aware. He brings like an emotional experience to these girls. I think these are more the qualities that I'd want to be known as a friend for. I wouldn't want to be like, hey, I've got lots of friends. Why do they like you, Marcus? Oh, because I can connect them and get them to parties. I'd prefer them to say, yo, they like me. I'm a cool guy. I'm fun to be around, right? I'm really interesting. The girls respect me and want, like, just want to be with me. If we yep. were not connecting, if we were not going to a party, would they still hang out with Bob? I don't think so, right? If yeah, Bob so was they just they at would. a cafe, right. if Bob was just at a cafe, right, and he couldn't give them access after a year mm -hmm. of this coaching, I don't think they're hanging with Bob. Sorry to for sure. So, go for it. No, 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 for sure, Marcus. So there's six different event types that we teach. And like the one I talked about, the con we used to call it the Corona container because it was during coronavirus, is one of them where they come back to your place and they just hang out with you. And it's not to take you to a party. So there's different places in the funnel where girls, it, it, the, the, Marcus, I, I don't mean to give you a hard time. It's just you're the 700th cold approach guy to come after me and come with the same cold arguments over and over guy. again. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't mean, I don't mean to, like, again, I'm not coming after you. It's just... Right, right, but but that's what the 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 of no, this debate I'll, was. I'll just it, it, I'm constantly having to defend this, and then I keep showing my clients, and it's like, yeah, but they're not learning a skill, and I'm like, but they are learning a skill. You can't assume that I don't teach them those same skills. What you're assuming is that because they don't get to do a bunch of cold approach and fuck up, they're not going to learn them as fast. And I'm telling you that they cool. do because they're around so many beautiful women quicker, and that is how they learn. Well, those they're around quicker. the same. They're around the same amount of women, right? Like I, I disagree. I could me, totally disagree. Me, I totally disagree. Yeah. If you put Bob, let's go back to Bob. If you put Bob in a party of 500 girls, he's not really around 500 girls, right? He can only talk to one girl at a time or a group of girls at a time. It's not like he's up on stage for four hours speaking to 500 women and getting interacting with all of them, right? Like in cold approach, you might go to a group of four girls at a time. You might speak to one girl at a time. Like you're probably mm -hmm. speaking to the same amount of girls during the night of a cold approach, actually probably more. Oh, I see what you're you saying. You're saying event, speak to, right? not to be around. Got it. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, like be around. I mean, if it's just being around women, then I should just go to like a feminist march or something and just be around 500 women. Bro, great place campaign. to pick up women. Great place to pick up cold women. Approach, feminist true, march. I know. I great <laughs> a place. Of, great place. No, I don't. Just, no, I, I would go. Definitely yeah. go. Hey, exactly. let me just, just so we're on the same page about one thing. If you are advanced, if I if I bring you Marcus to this yeah. right here, if I bring you Mark, are we? Can you show the screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you go. We 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 don't need the audio, but Marcus, if I bring you to this, 
you're getting late at this, right, Marcus? Mate, if I snuck into that and no one knew who I was, what do you mean? We didn't snuck in, Marcus. Marcus, you wouldn't have to sneak in. I'd make you a fucking. I'd make you a if, fucking uh, judge. If every girl, I mean, you wouldn't have to sneak knew, in anything. If every girl knew I snuck in and I didn't know anyone, I'd still get laid. So of course, okay, yeah, that's my point. Older. But but it, but uh, but but remember, I have to. There has to be someone with the skill set to put anywhere. that many attractive women in one room, right? I do one hundred percent of the recruiting for that. There has to. Yeah, that, 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 you're asking about point. a skill set. They, that's they, the these skill. guys just no, really but, good but, party planners, right? No, no, but but then but then they all hang out with me afterwards, though. That's the thing. Like, so the thing is, like, gonna be this: if I bring a bunch of girls together, then I'm a party plant. And if they all hang out with me afterwards, then it's because no, I'm a good looking guy. Like, not you. No, 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 no. Okay. Not you. Sorry. When when I say yes. you, I'm talking about students, right? Yeah. I I think you're very competent. Like, once again, like, I'm not I'm not hating on social circle all over, yeah. right? Like, for me, the most efficient way now, if I wanted to sleep with a bunch of hot girls, is going to be spending more time on my social circle because I I have amazing game, right? And this shows, I mean, in Sydney, we've, we've done this over and over again. Like, but the the thing is... Let me, let me um, see if I can maybe bridge the gap a little bit. So what Marcus is saying is that for guys like you and him, uh, social circle game, game is great. You guys would both yeah. absolutely crush with social circle game. Yeah, I guess sure. what the question he's asking or his argument is making is like, well, let's not look at guys like us because we're kind of the exceptions. We're both very socially competent. Let's look at guys who are socially awkward, who have mm -hmm. you know just bad social skills, bad game, and those are the guys that he's not confident that could get results from social circle game. Is that correct, Marcus? Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm just ahead, thinking Marcus. if if Bob comes to me, right? I always ask, like, what's your goal? So if he says, like, I want to be better with women and end up in a relationship with a girl that really respects me, that I like. And if I say, Do you want a model? And he's like, No, 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 listen, I, I don't want a girl. It's like like I'm happy with a nurse. I don't care if she's like, I don't want someone sitting on Instagram all day getting DMs from other guys and like wanting to go For to sure. other parties and stuff. Like I just and this is the reason I'm saying is that most guys. Now, if you had a guy that says, look, I'm a promoter, I'm a photographer, and I just want to bang hot models. Yeah, maybe you want to take a networking course. Maybe you want to get you know better at this and build that up. Sure. But if I'm Bob, I don't want to spend a year getting really good at all this networking to sit down mm -hmm. with a girl and not have any more parties, right? And especially like if I'm sitting down with a girl, I want to have those skills that you do learn in my opinion, sure. a lot better from cold approach. And those are the skills that I want to implement for Bob. So I think like for me, you need to be a little bit more specific who you're targeting when you're talking about social circles, amazing. I think for very advanced competent guys, amazing. For people that have networking in their job, if they're a promoter, if they're a photographer, if they're a DJ, amazing. But if you're regular old Bob, right? And you've been on Alex playing the five stream and you've got some advice. I think social circle is horrible for you. I think it's, it's teaching you to be more friendly. I think it's teaching you to supplicate a little bit. Um, I think it's teaching you to like select for a certain type of girl. Um, I think that uh, it's not allowing you the right environment to be able to actually fuck up a little bit. And it seems like the social circle skills that you're teaching is very much based around networking and very little about if I took Bob and threw him in fucking Poland and to walk around for a bit, like, what does he start another whole new social circle all over again, or is he good with women? No, right, let's not Michael with, respond to all that. Yeah, yeah sorry, so it's a great little... question. The thing in Poland, it, he brings it with him because of his, his social media. But going back to what you said before, uh, I've been in this since the beginning. Uh, yeah, I got Neil Strauss's number in my phone. Uh, pickup in general has made more guys fucking weird. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying about a skill set, and I believe that maybe if you're the guy who can teach it properly, the vast majority of dudes who I see do pick up for a while, what they do is they become so desensitized from feedback from women that they just become weirder and weirder as they start to try to escalate in a club. They get kicked out of clubs, and then when here's the here's the main thing for me, Marcus. I I am I am on stage at the Marquee Sky Deck at EDC. I am backstage at Burning Man. I am in these places where I'm looking around and seeing these Fortune 500 CEOs, and I have yet to see one single pickup artist up there. Because whenever these guys are around, they're always just doing weird things in GA that is freak weirding them out, and they're getting kicked out of the club. Who, who are you talking about? Sorry, when, when you say, oh, you've never seen one pickup artist, who are you talking, are you talking about Neil Strauss? Or something? Like, who, who do you mean? No, no, no. I'm, I'm talking about we, we can go anywhere from from Todd Valentine to Owen Cook to whoever you want, any pickup artist. When I'm on stage at XS, I have yet to see one guy who's a pickup instructor or pickup students up there ever. 
Yeah, I just I don't, don't think see that's them get the to goal the for these guys, right? I don't think that goal Yeah, but is that's where the hotter women are. are. I, that's well, where the hotter women hot, are. There's, listen, there's hot women. You go to, listen, I just came back from Poland, okay? You want to, mm -hmm. every second girl there is hotter than fucking uh, half the models. There are some high women right? in Poland for sure, um, yeah. Yeah, and even like I went to Austin not too long ago, right? Um, now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like the girls up on the stage at excess uh, 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 the normal that you get in Austin, but they're really cute, attractive girls in Austin. Mm -hmm. And I would yeah. argue once again, I think in a relationship, I wouldn't want my girlfriend to be one of these. I think I think you misunderstand. Artists, I think you right? I think you misunderstand but what I'm saying. I think my, you misunderstand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I should see some pickup artists eventually be able to walk up to the ropes and get into a club easily instead of standing in line for GA. At some point, I should I be agree. in the marquee sky deck and see Listen. some pickup artists. And what I've seen for 15 years is yep. pickup students become weirder and weirder yep. and weirder, and yep. more and more Agreed. women complain about them. And those guys started off as True. basics. What I True. do though, honestly, Marcus, just so interesting thing. I don't think Alex told you this i don't teach a dating course i teach a networking course right and That's one important. of the things that i do is because of what happened so i've had adam Lyons. he's a buddy of mine adam was mm -hmm. sitting there talking to me about what happened with owen cook when rsd when they when they canceled alex jones adam Lyons calls up owen cook and says hey we got to take this content down because you're going to get canceled now i have a bunch of clients and you know as well as i do a lot of uncalibrated guys come to us so i have a decision to make do I start teaching a course where I start teaching guys, well, you can escalate, but maybe a little bit like this or not like this, or do I teach a course where you can get seven girls to every guy? I have a book literally by one called The Evolution of Desire by David Buss, which teaches this, and another book called The Setup by Dan Bilzerian, which shows exactly what I'm talking about. I use this framework and I say, do we do this, have women compete over us and not end up with a fucking great charge and not end up in that type of situation where we see it over and over again and then have my content pulled off of YouTube. So what I'm saying is from a beginner standpoint, I have been watching for the last 15 years, pick up, make dudes weirder and weirder and weirder. And what I do, guys never get kicked out of parties. They end up dating fucking beautiful women. They get access to incredible places. They get better jobs. They end up starting businesses. They end up getting connected with venture capitalists. They end up with better social media. And yes, do they do some cold approach? Like I said before, I got 20 guys we're coaching on cold approach tonight. If you go to Omnia, you'll see them all. But what their job to do is, Marcus, is when they, you were talking about before about uh, transactional. One of the issues is I yeah. want, if I'm playing can I, basketball. Can I respond to that? Go ahead, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I agree with you, okay? Most pickup guys are fucking weird. Most pickup coaches are awful, right? I'm not disagreeing with you here, but you would probably say the same about social circle coaches. You already have. I don't, I, 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 wrong, not to be right? arrogant, I don't think there's ever been a social circle coach before I taught it. And but, by the there way, I can show videos. I can show, I can show you videos of me and OE8 uh, teaching this don't, don't before this. anyone else. Go ahead. It, I... <laughs> So basically what you're saying is like social circle, everyone that's taught that and coached that before has been absolutely rubbish. So ignore that. I guess I'm kind of saying the same for pickup. Now, I okay. had a bit of a nuance here in the fact that I think a lot of guys are probably weird before pickup, right? I don't think pickup made them weird. I think if you follow a little RSD advice like lying in the street, maybe it made you a little bit more weird. But if you take some practical advice that something like Alex or myself would teach, um, then it's not going to make you more weird. It's going to actually allow you to calibrate right but it's going to do it in a way where you can once again you can have the ability to fuck up it's a better learning environment um so just because owen cook is no no i'm not saying owen cook but, please please stop like owen cook is a it, owen cook is great i'm not talking about owen cook well i'm I saying what's happening in general okay you speak. don't think owen cook's right well <laughs> no, he's, that's fine he's, um, he's, well, he's been a buddy of mine for a while, but, but my point okay. is this, what I found is over time, what's happened is we've taken the, the calibration we were looking for. What we did is we pushed them into these environments where instead of actually learning the skill, like you, you're saying that they're learning the skill. And my whole thing is, I think they're learning to avoid calibration by just consistently oh, going up and up again and doing it over and over again. But you've seen it before where these guys like turn into fucking Marines and they just go after every single girl they see to the point where they get kicked out of a bar. And the thing is, there's a way to do this with social calibration. Bro, you know, you're not, you know, as well as I do, Marcus. 
If you have a playmate on your arm and you walk up to the hottest girl ever, she's a hundred times more likely to not be weirded out by you. But it's my just, point it's is just so much easier with other girls. To have a playmate on your arm to get to this level, you need foundational skills. This is my whole point. You, I, you said yourself, you're running a networking course, right? So yeah. once again, mm -hmm. I think a networking course is really good for someone that has the basic social skills, that is already good with women, that maybe like is doing it to increase their money or wealth. Like going back to that point, you said how it's helped guys in other areas of their life. Guess what? Mm -hmm. So does cold approach, right? I myself just, uh, and I'm sure Alex can speak to this as well, is I change drastically the type of person I am because of cold approach. I think it's mm. the greatest therapy you can actually do is putting yourself in front of a girl and letting her actually reject you and let you know what's not right as opposed to thinking, oh, fuck, he's hosting a party, I, you know, whatever, I'll just ignore him then. I think um, with our students, we've had many guys that uh, have given testimonials not just for the cold approach skill, right? They think they come in and trying to get hot girls, but they realize they change who they are as a person in terms of like self-esteem, confidence, the ability to get yeah. like work and jobs, the ability to network, right? It also comes from practicing cold approach. Now, I agree, just to finalize this, I agree you need guidance, right? If you just have these RSD fucking guys that are going out nonstop, just spam approaching, doing the same thing over and over again, ignoring feedback from girls and being just retarded about it, then yeah, of course it doesn't work, right? They're just banging their head against the wall. The same way someone did that in social circle, right? Even if they were advanced and did like a retarded method, of course, they're just not going to get anywhere. So I think like, yes, they need guidance. And that's why, you know, people like us cold approach coaches are here. Uh, just, but the other thing I want to bring up, Marcus, because this is also another misconception, is that yeah. I never did cold approach. That's all I did for ten years. That's where I came up with this. What happened for me was, um, I remember I was I was going out with a bunch of uh, pickup guys, and then I lived in Austin or I lived in Atlanta, Georgia, and there was these club promoters that I met, and it was like so crazy the effortless manner that these guys could get 30, 40, 50, a hundred girls to show up, and they always had the hottest girlfriends. I disagree with you on this one point, this idea that if I bring a bunch of girls to an event that they wouldn't hang out with me after the event, I find the complete opposite to be true because they look at the alpha quality of me being a leader and a connector. And I'm the first person that they call when they want to go do. I am the first person, most girls in Las Vegas, when they come visit Las Vegas, you should see my DMs of all these stunning women that hit me up. I'm the first person they hit up when they come here. All I can ask for is the ball in my hands, right? Just when you do cold approach, all you can ask for is the girl to be in front of you. All I can ask for is the ball in my hands so that I can, that I can take the shot. So what happens is repeatedly because I'm that guy that they want to come to for the, for these, to lead these groups and to, and to do all this fun stuff. I get more opportunities. I get more interactions. I get more possessions with the basketball. I get to score more points. And so that's the, that's the difference we're talking about. Uh, definitely don't want to bash RSD. I think they've made a, a, a huge pivot. Um, but that's not, I'm not, I'm not calling oh, out gosh. specific pickup. Clips. Okay. You, you can, if you want to, uh, but my point is like, cause I really, I really don't like to talk bad about people, but the thing is, one of the issues is I have found that's net net that pickup overall over the last 15 years has really hurt men in general. And I have a business specifically because of all the men that pickup has really screwed up. And yes, what I teach is like, yeah, what, what I, what I teach, however, is a way to, you can still learn those skill sets, but you can learn the skill sets in a way where Today, I am I left and I had five friends and tomorrow I've got 10 and the next day I've got 15. And you can do that from a very low level. What you're saying before is you need a foundation in order to get the playmate to hang out with you. You don't. You There's there's ways for you to friend zone women that I can teach very easily where you friend zone them and you, you pick specific women. Like for instance, I have this weird thing where every girl I've dated for the last 10 years has like large fake breasts. So girls that don't have boob jobs, I immediately friend zone. It's very easy for me to friend zone. I t like I, Or girls that are like married or girls that are like unavailable or someone who's dating one of my friends, immediately friend zone them. Those girls are often the ones that assist. I had one of my clients, we were on stage for Dead Mouse the other day. We're on stage for Dead Mouse, and I had these two girls with us. And I know you're going to say, "Well, that's super uh, advanced." No, but I, I don't know what you you're stage. arguing against because I'm agreeing with you. Like you can do. Yeah. This. I've done this as well. Like the, yeah. all my well, Marcus, orgies. If you were friends from... with me, hold on, hold on, Marcus. If you were Go friends on. with me, which is not hard to do, if you were friends with me, I get you on stage with Dead Mouse. That's one step. That's not advanced. Do you see what I'm saying? Like the the networking part, the access part, then gets you into these unbelievably advantageous situations. And I don't think you need that much game to get laid in the. Well, I know you don't. That but much game to get laid in these on, situations. Your students aren't able to get me on stage with Dead Mouse, right? We're talking about well, you again. actually, some some of my students could. Like I'd say, there's probably twenty or thirty of my students that definitely could. But the point I'm trying to make is <laughs> when we're up there. <laughs> 
All right, sorry, go on. No, dead so, man, dead man. No, it, it, Marcus, it's a little different here on industry nights in Vegas. If you're a local, you can get on stage. Like if you go out regularly, oh, I, I think I, you I, meant like me and Dead Mouse are hanging out on stage. No, I, no, no. When I say, oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, well, in Vegas, fine. we have okay. we have a DJ booth, and then right. we have no, 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 stage tables around it. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. That's sorry. what I mean. I thought, stage I thought you area. Dead Mouse. I mean, Dead Mouse are going to hang out. I was yeah, excited. yeah. No, Joel, Joel okay. probably isn't going to want anything to do with you. But like, but frequently you'll see in my videos, it's me and my students, and we're up on stage at different places, and it's because they bring 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 big groups of women anyway so yeah, what happens my, is my goal isn't there. to get on stage for bob like bob's goal isn't to get on stage with dead mouse right like bob's goal sure. is to have like a girlfriend that he can settle down with and so sure. someone mentioned like the time investment in chat i was just reading through like I, I think that's probably the next thing we can probably um discuss is like the the time investment um because from the mm -hmm. outside i i know even with my lazy social circle game um it's a huge time investment um and I think like to do that for a year, like I'm just wondering like if Bob's your student, like what do you do? Yeah. How long before Bob actually is in like uh, open relationships with women? How is it until Bob's like in uh, like fuck Open buddies? relationships, I love that, yeah. No, well, no, I mean, uh, we, so we, yeah, like, we require, we, we require, Bob wants, yeah, right? yeah, we require four, yeah, four, four to five hours a week um, for the first three, four weeks. That's generally what we ask in the beginning. Uh, we, the guarantee for us is in 90 days to, to completely change everything. And then it gets progressively easier from there. So like for me, one of the reasons why I have so many networking coaches, Marcus, and you bring up a great point is that I can't go anywhere without people recognize me. We go to we, some, the, the, it's, I love your, your chat, Alex, I'm reading your chat. Like there are people just, I know that I'm telling the truth and I'm, I'm really hitting a, a sore spot because there are people just blatantly lying about me in the chat. It's hilarious. Um, one of the things that I'll do oh, is they, that they this works in Los Angeles. Everyone. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Th this works in London. This works in Los Angeles. I'll show you videos of me doing this in London, me doing this in Miami, me doing this in Los Angeles, me doing this in San Diego, me doing this in San Francisco. It doesn't make any difference what city you do this in. It's, it's really easy to do this. But going back to what I was saying before, with my students, we'll put them in these situations that are like massively advantageous for them. And then they can learn from those, they, they can learn from being hyper calibrated in those situations. I forgot what the original question was. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm just wondering if I'm they're bold. calling us all liars, bro. I'm just reading this chat. Like they're just getting ahead. Yeah, dude, they're going after you, Marcus. And like I listen, wanted to fuck I'm, you. I'm a fuck chat, you for okay, saying listen. that about Marcus. No, no, that is hey, fucking hey, bullshit. No, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, don't don't go on my black pills. Don't like say that, that shit okay. about Marcus. That's no, 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 fucked no, no, up. Listen. No, no, listen. According to the black pills, I'm tall, good looking. That's why I get girls. Okay. So yeah, for sure. Know. I know. Don't bad mouth them. I like them here. Okay. They keep telling me how good looking I am. So dude, don't, I'm don't so really excited. Play. I'm so um, excited to have Marcus at one of the bikini competitions. And it's going to be me and Marcus, like a bunch of girls behind us. And it's going to be, we're going to sit there. We're going to send the shit to Alex. come to Sydney to some of our sex parties. Okay. That's what, that's what yeah. you need to do. So do you know, um, you know, all so the girls my, in Swimsuit USA, like half of them are from Australia. Have you seen this? Like uh, of the top 10, half of them are Australian. It's crazy. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you need to find some, uh, yeah. honestly, Ukrainian and Polish. That's uh, yeah, that's for sure, okay, for sure. Get them over. Yes. Um, Those Ukrainian, well, and they're homeless. The Ukrainian the girls. I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to say that. I'm not supposed to say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're good, yeah. man. You can say whatever on my channel. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Marcus. You distracted me with Ukrainian women. I, I forget what yeah. I was about to say. Um, yeah. No, Bob. Yeah, this is what I was saying. So wow. if on Bob, right? Like he's he's making six female friends, right? He's getting mm -hmm. them invited to other parties. He's going to those yes. parties with them. At what point is Bob hosting his own parties? Mm. Fucking bitches. Yeah. Uh, Bob, I mean, usually mm -hmm. like 30 to 60. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the couple things I need to make this absolutely clear. Um, if we, if you come on the call, I will describe this in detail. I'm not going on camera and saying he's guaranteed to fuck no, bitches no, at listen, this point. Yeah, we I don't, don't teach a dating course. Like and Alex, here. yeah, because because Alex, just... Alex has a previous friend that lives in Brazil who makes who lies about that shit, and I don't do that. So we're not ever going to talk about that. What we can no, say I, though. Look, yeah, I'm just worried. I'm just yeah. curious, like the time investment. Like, yeah, is Bob yeah, yeah, trying to sure. set up a party every single week? Is this no. something he's got his VA doing, and he goes to a party once a month, and he's only closing yeah. a girl there if he closes a girl? Like, I'm yeah. worried. I'm wondering about the amount of time investment because it feels yeah, like, so, so great. especially in the beginning, you're investing a lot of time for something you might not continue if you're not in this like industry. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's uh, to, to be fair, the majority of people in my course are U S military officers. I have a whole lot of guys who are like uh digital nomads, digital nomads, probably the number one thing that I have in my, in my uh, course, uh, a lot of doctors, accountants, stuff like that. Very few club promoters are in my course. I do have like four or five of them uh, that are in that are that and obviously this course helps them out a lot, but no, the, uh, going back to saying before we require about four or five hours a week. It's generally what it is. And by the way, that includes the audiobooks. There's a 30 book book list that we require everyone to listen to in the, in the course. 
Uh, and the course is not all about picking up women. This is not a dating course. This is not how to build a network to, to fix your entire life. Um, we also, this is a really, really important distinction. I require guys to bring girls to other people's events before they're allowed to throw their own events. Let me say that one more time. It's really confusing for a lot of guys because they jump in my course and I give them this blueprint on throwing a photo shoot and getting like 15 girls to show up. And I'm like, stop doing that. That is not what I'm telling you to do. What you need to do is the skill set is being able to get large groups of girls to go with you, to acquiesce and to show compliance in those situations. And when you get that, you just generate, having women showing you compliance generates attraction with other women. What caught what you talking about before, which causes women to have that ick feeling, is when you supplicate or you don't enforce your boundaries or your voice inflection changes. Like you're talking to your buddy, oh, what up, bro? And you go talk to the girls and you're like, hey guys, you guys want to go get a drink with me? None of that. That is one of the key points we talk about in our program. You are a instead of being a leader of men, you are a leader of women. And you like you should see me like with the bikini competitions. I'm telling girls, line the fuck up here. This is what we're doing. We straighten all the stuff up. And I kind of it's funny because if you've ever been on Fresh and Fit, if you ever watch after the show, after Myron has been like mean to the girls the entire show, you know what fucking happens? Two or three of the girls like want to go home with it. I swear to God, every single time it's crazy. I watch this and it's because you can show alpha qualities without directly hitting on women. And you can do so when you're in groups of large women. That's what you're able to do. So the yeah, answer well, your question, you 90 days, 90 days that, is the most. If you tell Bob to days. do that, he's going to tell some girl she's a slut for having a high leg. Oh, yeah, well, we don't do and that. Yeah. Mar so there's Mar no, there's no slut. Angry, there's no denigration. Uh, no, but yeah. my point is like that Myron does it in uh, somewhat of an articulate way, even though I think like most of what he says is absolute bullshit. But I think like when he does it, it does come across as very alpha and dominant. If I tell yeah. Bob to do something like that and he tries to replicate him it's gonna it's gonna look really bad <laughs> yeah yeah no you're right you're right that's a that's a bad example i think i think what i mean more is is he stands his ground and he does not like again what what i say is treat them all the same make them talk about themselves so treat them all the same. you guys i'm sorry this is the third podcast i've done today i'm, I'm getting a love the caffeine crash it's the uh, for him, well, man, so yeah, yeah for sure you. So, so what I mean by that is for Bob, when you, and Marcus, I, I have no doubt whatsoever. I introduce you to the hottest girl in the world. Marcus has yeah, the same me. tonality. Um, yeah. Listen, Mar I'm Marcus, okay. Mar Marcus has <laughs> the same tonality. Marcus has the same voice inflection. Marcus has the same body language as if he's talking to me. I'm, Marcus doesn't change at all. Marcus is oh, bulletproof. I'd Marcus be a bit more a sexual girl. with the girls probably. <laughs> no offense. You're good looking. Okay. okay. Well, so, 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 so maybe, but my point is for me is it wouldn't make you supplicate because a girl showed up. And for me, when I say supplicate is there's, there's uh, autonomic nerve, your autonomic nervous system will fire when you're in a high stress situation. So for instance, sweaty palms, cracking of the voice, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, dilated pupils. All these things happen. Ha elevated heart rate. Those things happen whenever you're in a high stress, stress situation. And those things don't happen with my guys because we immerse them around women, which we're going back to the original point, which is I mm -hmm. think that men being hyper comfortable around attractive women allows them the leniency and the leeway to be able to get better and better and better with women. But as far as making mistakes, no, no one calls anybody a bitch or a hoe. There's no barking at women or laying down in the street or any of that shit in my program. We don't do that. I have so you guys many don't lay down in the I, street. We don't lay down in the street. It doesn't work out very okay. well. We don't. Yeah, I have yeah. definitely planked on a DJ booth before. I've done that uh, before. Uh, so yeah. Diplo, Diplo I, looked at me crazy, but yeah. I mean, we're kind of going back to the immersion thing, which I, I still think like, even if a guy has zero automatic response, which I'd like to autonomic, expect. Autonomic, Bob, yeah. Sorry, autonomic. I'm sorry. Yeah, if, yeah. I'd, I'd still like to expect Bob to have a little bit of a heart rate rise. I'd still expect Bob to maybe get a little bit excited if he sees a hook girl. I mean, I do, right? My heart's going to race a little bit faster. Yeah, but outwardly, outwardly, but what, outwardly, you don't have to I was show. about to say, right? I was about to say. Yeah. But it's not just about not having a reaction. It's about being very optimal. So you mentioned I would still have a good tonality. I'd still, Bob doesn't have that. Bob doesn't have a good tonality, right? He needs to learn all these things. But this is going back to the emotion point. I'm going back to the time point, right? Mm. For Bob the engineer that doesn't worry about wanting yeah. to be a promoter, DJ, blah, blah. Um, like, uh, so he gets six friends. He invites them to other parties. His friends are with the, all these girls at the moment. Mm. Uh, at what point in this journey, um, and I know it's going to be different for everyone, obviously, right? But like, at yeah. what point in this journey is he having his own parties, right? Because to me, like in cold approach, I think there's a lot of skills you're learning right away. These skills sure. are more just like befriending a network, befriending a network, befriending a networking. Mm -hmm. When does he actually have a hot girl in front of him that he can say, this is the girl I want at this party and I'm going to make it happen, right? Whether that is okay. like getting into play, fuck, marry, yeah. kill, or like these games, whatever. But yeah. when does that point happen? 
So that can happen in the first two weeks. But usually what we'll say is what the market's the, the ultimate limiting factor for us is the location. If you're in Cheyenne, Wyoming, it's just going to take longer because of the number of girls that you can get around you IRL. If you're in a place like Los Angeles or Scottsdale, if you're in a place like Dallas or Austin, then it's going to take probably 30 days. You can probably do it a lot quicker. So generally for us, as far as that's concerned, I can get more attractive women around you, the more attractive women that are around you. So if you live in Clark County, you know, Nevada, Las Vegas, it's a lot easier to get more attractive women around you than if you live in like Wichita, Kansas. So to me, the limiting, the ultimate limiting factor, we say 30 to 90 days, 90 days is going to be more difficult if you live in a place that's more austere and 30 days if you live in a place that has just a lot more women around you. The other thing is, Marcus, we actually build networks within inside of MOA. So for instance, if you were to join, uh, since I have, uh, you're in Sydney, right? Um, everywhere, but yeah, I spent a lot of time in Sydney. Yeah, so, so so I have I have about 12 clients in Sydney right now. They would share their list with you to begin the whole process. And so that would, that would jumpstart that part of it. And then from there, you'd be able to use that list in order to create events or, uh, or otherwise invite other girls to your events. The other thing, Marcus, is that like a guy goes to a new city, like for instance, San Antonio, Texas, when I was a second lieutenant in the Air Force, I was living there and I would go to these bars that the other guys in my unit would tell me about. And they were horrible. The women were hideous. They were so ugly. I went to a strip club one day and I saw this really attractive woman. I go up to her one time and I said, hey, listen, I'm not trying to hit on you, but if you weren't working here tonight, what club would you be at? And she goes, I'd be at the Falls in the Quarry. Never heard of this place. Go to another strip club, ask another, just all I cared about that they were attracted. Didn't give a fuck about anything else about them, tattoos, nothing. If you weren't at this club, where would you be? She goes, I'd be at the, I'd be at the Falls in the Quarry. Marcus, I go to the Falls and it's the most stunning woman I've ever seen in my life. The reality of the situation is because we're men and we come to a new city, the guys who are already established in that city don't want us around. They, they're actual barriers for us to get into these the best parties and the best places. And so how do we get around those barriers? A lot of times it's women that are going to put us in those positive situations. And that's something being friends with women and having women as teammates, that's something you can teach to a beginner. You definitely can teach that to a beginner because the thing is you don't have the problem of of um, escalation, screwing things up. So you can teach a guy in a, a beginning situation, hey, I have these other girls, I call them my sergeants or my lieutenants. I got six sergeants with me, The sar you go get that girl, you go do this, you go get me in here, you go to that, that, that person. Next thing I know, I'm on stage. Next thing, I, the, she's introducing me to this person, this person, this person. Well, like yeah. one of the things I do, go ahead, go ahead, Marcus. Yeah, no, uh, like going back to the point, I think uh, it's a lot of effort um, if you're using like networking and all this is an example of like to find a good club. I think like any guy, like you go to a pickup group and they're always going to tell you like where the hottest girls are, where the easy girls are. Do you believe them is. though? I have found, and, dude, I have found that pickup group always tells me the place that's easiest to get in where there's no cover. They never tell me where the hottest girls are because they no, can't, no, they, usually can't they, get in. They will tell, they will, if you ask just where he's good, they will tell you that. If you say, okay, okay where are all the hottest girls are, they'll know. It's the place they avoid yeah. most of the time, right? <laughs> um, yeah, there you go. But, okay, so we agree. Yeah. We agree on that one. Yeah, but I mean, you can still find out. And these guys, I think, are super helpful, right? Like, they will tell you the yeah. spots to go and everything like that. I, I, I don't think that's, like, an issue. But going back to, like, the time investment is, like, what I'm really worried about. And also, like, say Bob, for example, um, he's hosting all these parties. Let's say he does close a goal from one of the parties that, like, mm -hmm. made a move on him. He mm. probably didn't escalate, probably didn't select her, but she made a move on him. Let's assume that she's mm. hot enough anyway and it's, like, someone you want to sleep with. Now what happens? Like... Is yeah. social circle teaching him how to retain this within a social circle? Mar Marcus, so this is definitely an issue that we do have in the program. Uh, guys will join my program and very, very frequently within like the first 30 days have sex with the hottest woman they've ever been with in their entire life. And they will immediately try to wife the girl up. And we tell them, we play that song. Uh, what's the song by a Juicy J? Um, uh, these hoes, they for everybody. We play, that's like, the, that's like the anthem in Men of Action. We play that song for them. And then they always run off with some girl. And then a couple of months later, they come back in the program like, okay, my bad, my bad. I wiped up the first hot girl that I met. And we have another saying in MOA, which is don't stick your dick in crazy. And so that that's one of the issues that ha cool, happens. That's, that's a, that's a don't, you can stick your dick in crazy. C crazy is the best. Okay. No, it is. It listen, is good. It listen, is good. we can argue about whatever leave, you want, Marcus. No, no, they, we can they, argue about Marcus, whatever they, you want. Sometimes they don't crazy. leave though. Crazy is the best. I'm sorry. Okay, how about this? But you've lost can you, me can, we can have a threesome with crazy. We can have a threesome with crazy, but then she has to leave. Is that okay? Like I don't, I don't mm. like sticking. I've stuck my dick in crazy too many she's, times. She's and down. the problem is, there's always. I agree with you that they're hot, bro. I'm not uh, girls with BPD. Oh my God, they're incredible in bed. I'm not disagreeing with you on that one. But the, the point is, 
my, my issue is they'll do this situation where they will end up like meeting a super hot girl and we have to we have to reel them back in bro because so we're almost like, point, AA. like we're almost how like you teach a them, support right? group so, they, so how do you teach them this like so say they do sleep with a girl she doesn't have to be crazy she doesn't have to be like bipolar or something right but like say mm -hmm. he they do sleep with a girl who like situation is probably like his friend zoned her right or they've been like friendly yeah. he's been networking inviting his stuff she makes a move right on mm -hmm. him is what we're assuming in this scenario then yeah. he closes her how is he now framing this as something casual how what happens to the next event is he invited so to the next event yeah like does so, she get so, weird yeah, the next does. event? dude these are great questions man actually i'm gonna record this and use this in one of the sales videos such a great question so whether or not a woman is your friend and whether or not a woman is sleeping with you have nothing to do with each other in my course they have nothing to do with each other so frequently marcus if you ever came to one of my competitions you would see me go up and talk to a girl hey no, no, my no, friend you, marcus you listen no no, no i know i know i know I'm, I'm this is what i'm explaining to my this is what my clients do this is what my clients do i would go up to him and i'd be like hey man this is marcus this is marcus and you would meet them and then you would have no idea we were sleeping together because we keep things casual until i pick the one i want and then i tell her very clearly let's go out together but most of the time if i sleep with something like 85 percent of the women so I sleep how with you teach are my friends how are you teaching your students to create a frame that is hey this is casual right you yeah but it's, the, it's their choice though right being their, it's their choice what do you mean? Well, so so they may want it to be more than casual. It's, it's no, no. The let's. Well, I, I think that's bad advice for Bob. I mean, you mentioned this, right? You don't want him to wife up the first girl. So let's sure, say sure, sure. But you, but you tell girl, Bob to do that. Girl. Um, yeah, but Bob so, has never had pussy like that before. So how? Bob's going to do whatever so, the fuck he wants. No, no, no. But let's say it's a fifth goal then, right? So Bob okay. keeps making the same yep. mistake. Like, how do you teach him to actually set the right frame? Because telling a student, "Hey, um." Make sure this girl knows that it's not serious. Like, what does that even look like for Bob? He has no idea. And he's not just going to learn that by himself, right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it, how are you teaching these frames? Yeah, it's interesting Like, because like, we're getting kind of deep into the program. Oh, so one of the things I do is very early on, I explain to them, the terminology I use is, hey, I just want to let you know I cannot be in a monogamous relationship with you. That's what I say. Generally, that's what I'll, it'll usually happen either before the first time we have sex or right after the first time we have sex. I just need to let you know, I love hanging out with you. This is fantastic, but I cannot be in a committed relationship with you. I'm usually very direct and upfront. I don't like passive aggressive communication. Uh, Marcus, I really like as far as spinning that's places concerned and dating work. Was I'm sorry. You like, I think for a lot of students, this is not going to work. I think what if mean? you come over, if you have a girl and you tell her right after that first meet, hey, I don't want a monogamous relationship whatsoever. I think a lot of women are just, one, never going to want to see you again, never going to want to sleep with you again, right? Um, two, you might get a little bit of slut shame that comes up, like, oh, you just fucked me and now you tell me that you don't want it, like a relationship at all, right? They could feel a little bit perhaps used if the student's not like saying this in the most appropriate way. Um, I think there's a lot of issues that come up with here. If Mar you Marcus. just instinctually just say, hey, no, yeah, yeah. So, the other so, thing that happens, sorry, third point, just real quick. Yeah. Third point is some students will say, hey, um, I want this to be casual, which I think is better than saying not a monogamous relationship. But yeah. if you say that, they don't act that way. They invited to these events, they say every second day, they're fucking and the girl gets the wrong uh, idea because sure. your actions are different than your words. Sorry, yeah. No. So, so one of the things we do in men of action is our credo is integrity first service before self and excellence in all we do. So because integrity first, I am going to just have the guys say that I don't really like this idea of, and I'm not saying you're saying this, but a lot of pickup artists would do this, this idea of I'm going to see multiple women tell each one of them or allow any one of them to uh, uh, believe that I'm in a monogamous relationship when I'm not, I don't do that. And so is that no, difficult? Does that shit, right. But that does scare some women away for sure. My whole point is whatever words you choose, as long as honesty is included, that's the main, that's the main point. And uh -huh. if you're asking I, I me, really, my, sorry, if you, you yeah, don't like finish that point, sorry. Yeah. So, so, so for me, the, my main point is if he's grown his network and he's had sex with five women that are more beautiful than he's ever been with in his life, there's mistakes that are going to happen. And what I found is, man, when guys are in that space, I give them the best advice I can. And they just do what they're going to do. Just like in Alcoholics Anonymous, you have some people who are going to listen and stay on the wagon and some people are going to fall off. I just have to be there to support them when they come back. That's generally the way I do it. I try not to judge my students. I try to tell them, hey, listen, this is probably what's going to happen. You're going to be with a super hot girl. You're going to be like I had a, a client one time. He was hitting me up and he was like, hey, man, this girl just fucked this dude. And then afterwards, she wanted to fuck me. And then she didn't call me back the next day. And I'm like, who gives a fuck that she didn't call you the next day? She just fucked some other dude. Like, you have to explain it to them sometimes because they're you're bringing them from the $5 a hand table to the $5,000 a hand table at poker. And when they lose, it hurts more. And so a lot of times there's just lessons that they have to learn. And I'm there to help them. I'm here, there to try to guide them. But I can't, I mean, 
I have this saying about my friends. I'm, I'm there. I'm, I'm there to protect you, but I'm not there to save you. I'm there to protect yeah. you, but I'm not there to okay. save you. So this is where I, again, disagree. Like with my students, when they start fucking goals, right? They build up that skill. They start attracting women. Then they will get some rejections. They still learn to overcome those. Then they start having sex. They learn to have better sex. They learn to retain goals. They learn to not, not be so needy. Um, when they go through all these, through all these stages, for me personally, I think it's a really bad idea to like think about it as AA and it's like, well, you kind of got to do your own thing and figure it out and blah, blah. Again, I think it's all about guidance. I think it's all about that. So when it comes to like setting the right frame for if you want like a casual relationship, I think it does need to be very honest. But just coming out like almost, it feels lazy just being like, by the way, um, I don't want anything monogamous carries all those issues. I would rather teach a student do it in a little bit more nuanced way. Even before you're having sex, the girl should know that you're a bit of a fuck boy or like how you want to define that, right? The girl should sure. know that you're not looking for something monogamous right now and you want to get married right now. Yeah. So they should start feeling that through being a little bit more sexual, through talking about other women, using pre-selection, as you mentioned. You can use this through stories without sure. having to have that girl on your, your shoulder, but that could help. Then after sex, I'm not even thinking or talking about whether it's monogamous or not. I mean, you've just slept with a girl. That to me yeah. sounds super, like in my opinion, yeah, Marcus, super weird. Uh, I wouldn't let, let me add context. Me. Yeah. yeah, let me add context. It's if she asked the thing about the stories and the fuck boy thing, of course, I totally agree with you. Like that's, but that's what we do. Like, I, I guess what I'm assuming is we met her on stage at a nightclub. She kind of assumes the fuck boy position in the, in the first place. It's just when, what happens is you make a girl, she really enjoys having sex with you, even though she knows this is, you know, you're nothing but fucking red flags. She still wants to be in a relationship with Brock, the bartender who has no intention of being in a relationship with her. We see this all the time. Women make this mistake. In that case, I, I think directness and bluntness. Relationship with Brock the bartender. I've seen fair. a lot of women try to be in a relationship oh, with Brock course, the bartender. Of course, you've seen a lot yeah, of yeah, women but, but, want to be. But, but, but I don't think that's like a typical stereotype that girls are like, oh, I really well, want to my, date my, the bartender. My point is, in in the case that we have sex and then afterwards she's asking me, she's like, hey, where is this going? I, that's when I'm going to use honesty. Because the other thing with Marcus is that I teach my clients is that rule number three, abundance is always the answer. Unless you have a, a heroin addiction, then abundance is not the answer. But other than that, abundance is always the answer. It's like you need to, you don't need to act or bluff like you could walk away. You literally need the ability to walk away. And so if you have plenty of women in your life, I do think blunt honesty would work. Nuance could work. I don't mind nuance. Marcus, as long as remember, you're telling talking, the truth, remember, I don't care. As about, long as you're telling the truth. Remember, we're not talking about me or you. Me and you could yeah. fucking say whatever we wanted to and probably get away with it, right? Um, but I'm talking about Bob, right? So I don't know, dude. My girlfriend's got a Glock like right next to the bed. I don't know if I can get away with anything. I can get away well, with a lot. <laughs> uh, maybe maybe you need some more boundaries. <laughs> but I think like with I think with Bob. Who's like, this bitch? If, yeah, I think I think I'm fucking Bob, with you. I'm kidding. No, no, it's all good. Um, I think with Bob that yeah, I mean, this is a common problem in so many students is that the reason the girl is asking on that first night, what is this, where is this going, is because he's already made a mistake. Like, girls sure. are never going to ask me on the first, I don't even remember the last time a girl on the first night yeah. said to me, hey, is this going to be a relationship or something? That's crazy to me. But Bob, it might, because Bob, what he probably did is after he had sex, he's already asking the girl, like, when can we see each other again? He's probably like, ah, uh, yeah, no, I you know, he's probably being super needy. And the girl's like, hang on. You had a couple of girls around you at the club. I got this impression that because you had these girls around you, you're probably pretty good with women, but he's not, right? I got the impression that you're probably a bit more of a fuckboy. He's not. And so now yeah. he's acting really needy and the girl's like, what's going on here? And then Bobby's like, I don't want a relationship. And now the girl's left really like confused. She's not sure whether to pursue something, whether there's a chance. I think what would be better for Bob is to say something like, look, right? Um, at this point in my life, I'm after something like a little bit more casual, but with the right goal over time, if like it's going to work, it's going to work. And so mm. my philosophy right now is like, I'm just pretty chill, pretty casual with everyone. And I'm not going to decide to be in a monogamous relationship with someone unless I've known him for a while and I make that decision. So that could be her. That could be that girl. Who knows? Maybe Bob like after six months does decide to settle down with her. Um, but at least like you are being honest, you're leaving it open a little bit. Um, and I think it's like a better way to, to handle these frames. And I think like yeah, Marcus, that's the big issue with a lot of guys when they start fucking girls is like the mm -hmm. frames are awful. And we can agree this yeah. is the same with a lot of pickup guys that we know, right? Even coaches is there's a lot of coaches out there 
that might even get laid every now and again, but are just awful at having like relationships and frames. And I think that this is something like I would consider in my like cold approach is, is exactly what we're teaching. Um, it's a lot of setting frames, right? Which you get to practice. Yeah. I'm um, sorry. No. Yeah, no, I, I, I like what you're saying. I just don't use that many words. I really try to keep things short, especially when I talk to women. Like I, I try to make it very simple. Like I'm not like you're fantastic. Uh, I want to see you whenever you'd like. I don't want to be in a relationship. And I, and I, and, and when I, this is what I tell my clients to do and do the girls sometimes leave because it's not very nuanced. You're right. I just take a different approach. I do like bluntness when it comes to women. I found that it just works really well uh, with some. And then when it doesn't work, the thing is the guy has to be able to call the bluff by actually having abundance in his life, which I think social circle gives you a lot of abundance. There's always a thing to go to. There's like the mechanism by which you meet women is already enforced. Like the mechanism by which I were, if my girlfriend and I weren't together, the mechanism by which I could meet women, there's no club in Ibiza I can't just walk into because of my social circle. And I teach my clients to do the same thing. So the abundance is always, it, I, I, I want to go fishing and I live right next to a pond. There's okay, always so new let, fish there. Let's use that example, right? So say uh -huh. Bold's been doing this for a year, okay? So yeah. he, spent, he spent a large proportion of that time, I think you say like, you know, uh, go to the parties, friends or whatever. Let's say after a year, he's, he's, you know, sleeping with some girls, having some success with Mm -hmm. social circle okay which once again i think you'd be having more success with cold approach um is still okay. my opinion but say he um went to the barista right like he went to get a coffee and the the lady behind there was really cute um or maybe there was a girl in line right how what skills has he learned from networking that's going to get him uh, more attractional get laid more so yeah. than if he spent that time actually developing personal skills of cold approach like being more confident um, learning to escalate learning to turn the conversation sexual learning to share parts of yourself mm -hmm. that are attractive and valuable um, yeah how does he how does he go with the barista or the lady in line yeah so the confidence part i don't think is exclusive to cold approach versus okay, uh, social fair. circle i okay. think the confidence part becomes i also think the attraction part i'm very 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 big on physique i am very big on weight training it is something that i heavily heavily black enforce pills. in my program huh no, 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 very big on that. There's, there's a lot of uh there's a lot of black pilled guys around so they'd be yeah i mean but, but but whatever the thing is like do you want to do i do think you need to be in the best possible shape you can because it shows like a show like the shoulder to waist ratio you can get you should be getting rid of as much of this fat around your waist as you can i really do think that's an important but, thing but let's, and assume, that is an right? let's assume the guys yeah. are like you know I, th I think in both our methods we're going to tell guys to like lose weight if they're fat into like okay, work out for sure like that right um yeah I i'm trying to compare the two right so let's so, say so let's let's right? go through some other attraction yeah. triggers so i think leader of men is an incredible attraction traction trigger that it's easier to show in the way I do it. Also combiner of groups and being a connector is also an alpha, uh, an alpha trait. So combiner, the people but who combine show people. this also, to the lady in line. Sorry to interrupt. Lady in it's, line. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. So the, he's lining up for a coffee. So either the fucking lady in line, the barista, how's he showing as he's speaking to this girl that he's a leader of men is like, um, I mean, you could, so, so a lot of my invites for, for girls are going to be something on social media. I, I, one of the things we talk about in the program is called irrefutable visual evidence. So a lot of dudes will come up and they'll say, I do this or know this, that not you, I'm not saying you do this Marcus, but pick up for a long time, had this horrible idea of DHVs. They called it demonstrations of higher value, but it was never a demonstration. It was always explication of higher value. They would talk about how they were cool. In my case, what I do is I like to use actual things on social media to say, would you like to come to this? It could be anything from here's my puppy to, oh yeah, that's right. I, I play in this band to anything that shows competency or relevancy. I use social media for that in order to make a connection initially. Okay. And then from there, when you're talking about like, we, we, we have this, um, with this practice that we do in our course called watch yourself on camera, we have guys come on camera and we critique them. Hey, what's going on, man? I don't know why girls don't want to talk to me. Like we go over voice inflection, tonality. There's always a space in between the words that needs to be there so that guys aren't mumbling. I work with guys, especially when English isn't their first language and they're talking to girls that are English, uh, that speak English. There's all these things that we go over, a clear speaking voice, choosing a lower register, choosing, uh, also public speaking is something I think is a huge attraction trigger for women. If you can get good at public speaking, I think it's absolutely fantastic. But these are, now you, you keep going back to the cold approach thing. What do we do with the barista? With the barista, I'm just showing her, hey, do you want to come to the $60,000 bikini competition? With the barista, I'm just like, I'm, or with the barista or whatever, I'm like, hey, cool, do you live here? Awesome, where should I go to X, Y, Z? Very cool. And then I'm like, hey, would you like to come to this, this, and this? I always invite them to parties. That is, 
absolute, Marcus, a crutch that I teach all my guys. Invite them to social situations so that you can get them to another situation. So, again, so I have possession of the ball so that I can take a shot. I just want as many possessions as I can with as many women as I can. And in those situations, whereas you may be doing it through cold approach, I'm doing it where I'm walking into a party with 90 girls I invited. And yes, I can teach guys how to do this within 60 days, 90 days. I can teach them how to do this. You're going to go to these parties. And when you do so, you have all these girls that already recognize you. And I just think it's way easier to do this with warm approach. That is a skill set. Leading people is a skill set that, that is an attraction trigger. Having a dominant physique and having a dominant voice and showing dominance are attraction triggers for women. And having other women show compliance to you is a massive attraction trigger for women. And these are all things that you can get through uh, through call approach now, or through social circle. Now, here's the thing. You're going to bring up some more things that I'm going to be like, well, yes, you can do that in, in, um, you can do that in social circle as well. The only ones why I say you won't is escalation in public. That is not something I teach, but it's not something that I can't teach. I've definitely done it before. I just think it's a bad, it's really bad to teach uh, uh, anyone who's even uh, intermediate escalation in public. I just don't teach Oof, that. But I do so teach merging cool sets. Merging sets is like a major, major thing that I teach is merging sets. And that's one thing. Dude, I've gone out with so many pickup dudes and they'll sit there and talk to a girl and their friends are just like sitting there staring at the guy talking to the girl and I'm like nudging the guy I'm like, introduce me to our friend, dude. We need, I need to handle the obstacle. And they don't get this concept because that's a social circle concept. It's not a cold approach concept. And that's the reason why it doesn't work. Okay. I'm always trying to get all the friends to love me. I, I know you're going to say, well, that's a cold approach concept. It's not. No, no, no. no. This social... is what I'm going to say. This is what I'm going to say. Yeah. I'm going to say that, uh, <laughs> that um, the, the girl be speaking to okay mm -hmm. um again there's there's two alternate realities of bob right one one is social circle bob one's called approach bob yes. um uh, I, schrodinger's bob it's schrodinger's think, bob. Uh, yeah i think that maybe what he really likes about this girl right is that maybe he's been to these bikini parties but maybe he really likes this girl because she started talking about like the type of fucking books she likes to read right and maybe mm. she's a girl that's like look i don't want to go to your fucking parties right so yeah Sure, that could work. You spend a year building up these networks and grinding around to parties, having VAs message all these girls, go to the parties, have girls with you. That's cool. And I think it works once again when you have a foundation. Um, mm -hmm. My issue here is what happens when Bob can't rely on his social media right now? And I get it, like still just having that on your social media is still like beneficial and still nice. But what is he actually going to do with this lady in line that fucking likes to read? And yeah. I would argue that the um, cold approach Bob is probably going to be really interesting. He's going to be more interesting because he's had to be more interesting. He can't get away with being just a little bit interesting in setting up people and being friends. He's had to be a lot interesting because he's got rejected every time he wasn't. And now he's going to have to be a little bit sexual because he can't get away with being friend zone Bob, right? So at the club, he's learned to sexually escalate, doing it in a way that's now calibrated. He's able to even do it in public. And I think, social, uh, I think cold approach Bob is probably pulling this girl and closing and probably that's the first time she's ever been pulled and closed for and she's probably seeing this girl again whereas I, social circle bob um has to rely on inviting her to a party would be like i think social view. circle bob is incredibly interesting because social circle bob in, include like all of his friends end up meeting their boyfriends and girlfriends through social circle bob i think social circle bob is super interesting because he has connections and knows things about people that no one else knows i think social circle bob has an incredible ability to like carry on conversations because he's around interesting people and used to being around them all the time and let me explain this also maybe this is not a social circle thing but in my course reading is fundamental all my clients are required to go through these 30 books. It is a motherfucker too. And they're doing it even after the course is over. I require them to get through all kinds of books. It has to do with evolutionary psychology. It has to do with tonality. It has to do with stuff like that. Reading is very important. My girlfriend and I, we pick books together and we read them together. That's one of the things we do. I think Social Circle Bob is very, very interesting. But the thing is, the problem is, Marcus, I mean, your, I, I, your, I want to your push cold approach, Bob. Bit. Oh, sorry. If your, you want to finish the point. Go ahead. Yeah. Cold, your cold approach, Bob, is your cold approach, Bob. And my social circle, Bob, is my social circle, Bob. And the thing is, we, we're going to argue about what these two social circle and cold approach, Bob, would do. But we're talking about them in our perfect 10 out of 10 scenario for our new guy. The oh, idea no, that your no, new no, guy. 10, right. he's, he's fucking the barista, too. Yeah. I, no, like, what, my, what my point, my point is, I don't, think you're, I don't think your newbie, your newbie guy is more likely to fuck the barista straight away from doing escalation on her at the, at the Starbucks. 
any more so than my guy is when he gets the barista to come and get in the VIP guest list at the Maxim party and then from there leave to go to the mansion party and then from there go back to his hotel with her. Yeah, no, I actually I think, think my guy think is going to receive way less objections and have a much easier time developing attraction than your guy is. That's that's why I see. Yeah, no, I mean, th this is the whole point that the girl doesn't want to go to this like party, right? She doesn't. And Bob okay, probably- Okay, then, then it's a photo no, shoot. Just, let me finish the point, right? Okay. Then And Bob probably- doesn't um, want a girl that is like busy on social media and wanting to go to all these parties. That's my point. And also my point is I get it, right? Like I'm not saying social circle Bob is learning nothing and he's a complete waste of breath, right? Yeah. I'm just saying that he hasn't learned the skills. He it's, it's the environment you put him in. You'll turn it, taught him certain skills and focus on those ability to uh, hence like learn other skills, right? So it's almost mm. like if you have 10 talent points, where are you putting them? You're putting him all in networking, befriending, and you know, that side of things. Whereas mm. I'm putting it more in like the personal traits of Bob so that later on, once he's developed those, once he's actually sleeping with girls, having some retention, now I can be like, Bob, what are your goals? And he's like, you know what, Mark? I wanted that like goal at the cafe is what I thought I wanted. But you know what? Yeah. I don't, right? I want a fucking big titty fake boob um, girl that is all over social media with five. What are you saying? Girls. What's going on? Now, What's happening? I would, I would <laughs> argue with. that Bob's... Uh, this, we're gonna have different views on this, but I would argue yeah. Bob's being a little bit superficial here. But uh, then he I think Bob that, should be right? superficial then, in the then beginning. He has I think Bob can be skills. superficial in the beginning. So then he has all the skills to be able to do that, right? He has the foundation, mm -hmm. yeah. and this is why, like, I teach social circle to our, like our mastermind to our students, but mm -hmm. I only do it for the advanced guys, right? Someone you want to call, being like, "Hey, Mark, I want to set up a party." I'm like, "Dude, fuck that!" Right? Don't waste your time. Get the fundamental skills. Put all your points, all your talent points in you personally. Not like networking, party planning, and sorry to, I know that sounds a bit, um, uh, I know it's not party it's, planning. It's a, little, it's a little bit reductive, it's, right? No, I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I would rather him put himself, you know, face rejection. Like these guys mm -hmm. that are going, you know, social circle, yes, I don't have to get rejected. Fuck that. Do the work. Go out there, get rejected, right? Figure out what is actually attractive just in you personally to women. Don't rely on like these parties or having other women. First, actually have yourself being attractive. Do that. Mm. You'll do that very quick if you do it through a cold approach. And then if you want to do social circle, do social circle, right? I think social circle is fine. It's great. I've fucked a lot of girls off social circle. Students have too. But you need the foundation. And that's what I'll keep going yeah. back to. Beautiful. Awesome. Hey, I have to leave here a little bit. Uh, Marcus, this is great. Um, the only place I, I would say I, I disagree a little bit is the idea that like the able, the ability to retain a girl is more uh, likely through cold approach than social circle. I think it's just as likely through social circle in this, part yeah, because, right. because, because her social circle is part of what you are. I actually think because you have more connections, it's actually more likely to retain uh, in a social circle environment than it is in a cold approach environment. If you want to retain this girl, to have sex with her on a regular basis, to, to be like a fuck buddy. Um, one other thing, this is just my personal opinion. I think in the beginning, when a man start, learns how to become good with women, I think he should be a little bit super superficial. I think he should experiment and try lots of different things. And if he wants to fuck the big titty Instagram model, I think he should do that at least once or twice. And then also, if he wants to fuck the, a different kind of girl, he should do that too. I really don't think men should be I really don't like this idea, especially in the beginning, of men sourcing for a certain type of girl. I think men should be attractive to all women. So I do treat teach multiple attraction triggers. And just to be care, uh, clear, two things I want to I say. Number one, I do teach some cold approach stuff. Like, again, tonight I'm going out and we're going to do cold approach stuff over at uh, Omnia. I just don't teach it as the majority of my course. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's, the, that's the main thing. And secondly, Marcus, I was a little hard in the beginning just because this is like the fifth time some guys come after me and they were like, your social circle stuff does this and you've been more than fair. So I apologize. You've been more than fair. A lot of times guys are just straight up like all of cult, a social circle is all bullshit and you weren't like that. So I appreciate that. It's just, I keep getting into these debates over and over again. And then I keep showing my clients and then they keep getting mad and saying my clients are doing X, Y, and Z. So I was unfair to you and I apologize in the beginning. No, no, good. Uh, Michael, before, before, before you leave, I wrote down some questions that Chad wanted to ask. Do you have mm -hmm. like five minutes? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, going on cool. a crypto podcast right after this. It's crazy. All right, cool. So one of the comments is that in social circle, you have to be more indirect. Uh, you can't mm -hmm. explicitly show intent. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so I have, a, I have a, a bit of a disagreement. I don't think women sleep with men because of their intent. I think women sleep with men because of their status. And I believe social circle is a way to build status 
organically and authentically. Does it take a little bit more time? I would just, I would tell you it could take 30 days. It would take 90 days. If you, if you follow my instructions, I think you could do it pretty quickly. And what ends up in, happening in the end, it's like, it's like starting a company. There's that point where you have to do, you have to invest, you have to file for an LLC. You have to do all that stuff in the beginning. Is there a little bit of work? There is, I think it gets progressively easier over time. And I think the, the level of advancement, especially with the with a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A cohort, a, a group of other men, like-minded men as iron sharp, sharpens iron. Again, I don't just teach social circle. My group is a social circle, huh. right? I don't just teach social circle. I like, there's a reason why, again, Bulzarian, Ty Lopez, these guys ask me to be part of their programs, right? The, the reason why they do that is because I teach social circle while I'm doing social circle. And so my social circle, which is MOA, which is part of it, they actually help other men and build them up as well with all these other attraction triggers. And like I said before, I'm not judgmental. If guys come in there, a lot of my clients, they'll fuck up and we're, we're there for them. We just turn off the recording whenever we do that. They tell the story and we're like, hey, man, I know you fell off the wagon, but we're here for you. We're here to support you. My group is in, in a lot of ways a support group because all I'm in, the only thing I'm interested in is men growing and being the best, uh, best versions of themselves. Okay, cool. Which leads me to my second question for both of you, actually. How do you teach men to vet for sexual attraction? Mm. You want to go, Marcus? How do you teach men to vet for sexual attraction? And like, how do you know the girl's sexually attracted to? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, and so she's just using it to get into parties or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think there's going to be more of a social circle question. I, like for a lot of guys, I don't really vet for sexual attraction. Like what I would teach them is you want to build sexual attraction and tension. And then mm -hmm. you test with compliance, right? Um, yeah. And so once you have compliance on the sexual topic, so we teach our guys to sexualize the conversation, sexually DHV, they can talk about other girls that have been with, they can talk about giving the girl the best experience of a night that night. If the girl is like very interested talking about it, um, then yeah, I mean, similar to, I guess, probably text game that you teach is uh, if, if she's compliant, then she's going to be sexually attracted. I'm not thinking or wondering like if it's anything yeah. else. Okay. Yeah, so Marcus for is, you, Marcus you is right. Cool. Yeah, I'll go ahead. No, go ahead. It, it's exactly. Yeah, it's going to be. So the thing is, I don't care. I have absolutely had women act like they fucking hated me the whole night. And then as soon as their friends leave, followed me into my bedroom. And I've absolutely had women the whole night grabbing my dick. And at the end, it was the whole thing was just a fucking ploy to, to get attention. The, oh. the reality of the situation is if you put out compliance loops and she follows those compliance loops, hey, man, had a great time. She's like rubbing all on you. It's like, oh, that's great. Do you want to go with this next to me to this next place? If she says no, there you go. You just vetted for sexual compliance. For me, a woman is sexually interested in you when she has sex with you. What happens a lot of times, and then I've seen this with pickup, is like they think because they got a woman to spin around and fucking pick them up and bark at them or whatever, that means she's into me. No, it doesn't mean shit. What we, rule number one in MOA, we don't listen to the words. We only pay attention to people's actions. So I'm going to put forth a, a, a bunch of compliance tests. And if she follows all the compliance tests, that lets me know that she's interested in me. If she doesn't follow the compliance tests, then that lets me know that she doesn't. So I'm not, I'm not interested. Like, I don't sit there and worry about it. I'm just going to set up the compliance test because I've seen every single false indicator there is. And I've seen every single negative indicator there wasn't. And the main thing that I've noticed, the, the number one indicator, I will say this, if a woman is consistently qualifying to me, that usually does mean she's pretty interested. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so here's another question for you, Michael. So uh, it's kind of a little bit of a personal anecdote, but bear with me. So um, I've been using Instagram to try to recruit girls for speed dates. And I've also slid in some girls' DMs, and I've had some success, but the success rate is like incredibly low. And I would say my Instagram is probably better than the majority of guys. So what is the approach that you teach guys, like the average guy, to take when they're sliding in a girl's DMs? Yeah. So first off, your fucking social media has to be perfect. It can't just be good, number one. And number two, Alex, if you had other girls reaching out to these girls, you're going to notice that their response rate is going to be much higher. What you mm. need is girls saying, I had a fucking great time. So now for my Access Vegas show that I do every other Thursday, I don't even have to recruit anymore. It's girls recommending other girls to mm. come on. And I get huge, and I get huge mom. And then the other thing is, I know this is, we were talking before about some guys don't want big titty Instagram models. The thing about big titty Instagram models is that if they come on your show, everyone else wants to come on your show. It's just like a waterfall of people wanting to come on. So what you would need is like one, I'm just going to throw out some girls in Miami, one Shea Metal, one fucking Fo uh, Sonic Foster, like some of those girls like that, that are like the it girls in Miami. If you get one of those girls to show up, then you're going to see a, t a flood of girls wanting to come on the show. Oh, okay, but you, yeah. your show's not at IRL. Your show's not IRL. Um, yeah, no, you, the other thing you have to understand though, is 
because of the the way your show set up where they have to have light and a camera pointed on them there's a few girls that just aren't comfortable with that environment so you have to find the right type of girls but you know you've had that girl um what's her name the australian girl oh no uh automate with amy you know what i'm talking about she's been on your show before right amy uh yeah i believe so yeah, Amy's great. At, Amy can help you recruit other girls. So that's one thing I teach my guys. It's uh, it's one girl who's the champion who recruits the other girls. That comes from a book called Crucial Conversations. Having a champion lead the idea so that other girls want to join in with whatever it is you're doing. That would be the number one thing I would do, Alex. Yeah, no, I do agree with you on that. I've, like when I do a coalition of the willing. When I do street interviews and like I'm the one that approaches girls, I get maybe like a 20, 30 percent success rate of girls stopping. I had my girlfriend do it last weekend. She had like an 80 percent success rate. Like every fucking girl was stopping for yes. her. So, yeah. And, 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 and try this. Uh, try this. If there's a way you could get a picture of girls like the, the real thing, really important with compliance on social media, pelvises need to be turned in towards you. Girls need to be smiling or looking happy. Girls are touching you. You're not touching girls. Photos oh. like that, I highly recommend. Those show IVE. And there's this thing, even if the girls aren't sexually interested in you, there's this thing in the woman's hind brain. Remember, we're all hairless murder apes. There's this thing in the woman's hind brain. They're like, what's going on here? Like, it's it's so subconscious and they just see it and they're just far more likely to acquiesce. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so also this was a suggestion someone had, which I thought would be a really good suggestion, is having you guys both bring one of your students off for a speed date. So you'll bring one of yours, Marcus, yeah. you'll bring one of yours, Michael, and uh, have them do a little competition. I think that would be fun. We might be able to yeah. do that, yeah. I got to yeah, see which one of my guys two, would do it. Two wow. uh, beginner to immediate uh, students. No, uh, pick, sure. pick your best. Pick your best ones. Our oh, best. Oh, well, then. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. We can do that. Yeah, That's fine. yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, think I, I think that would be a lot of fun. Uh, okay, oh, let's just go through a few super chats and then we can quickly wrap up. Salute to the great Michael Sartain. Okay. I'm not going to read any questions that are disrespectful. So, uh, sorry. Uh, sick debate. Thanks, bro. Appreciate you. Uh, also, my, my guy, I just got here. I already know. Dude, I love, I love how, I love what I read in the chat that my course is $50,000. Like, these guys are just, like, so desperate. You know, by the way, Alex, you know who's who's writing these comments, right? Uh, you think it's you're, shot? You're, you're, no, it's your friends of your former buddy in South America. Oh, I don't think so. Whenever, whenever I come in here, bro, they're just coming. Huh? I think it's just uh, just random haters. So oh, maybe you can clarify. How much do you charge for your course? I can't. I'm not going to say it on here. It's different for different people. But you guys are welcome to set up a call. It is a high ticket program. I'm not going to tell you it's cheap, but it's a uh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. No worries. Yep. All right. So do you guys want to do closing statements? Just basically wrap up your thoughts in a minute, and you can plug your channel or plug anything you want to plug. Marcus, you want to go? Hey, uh, can can you go for it first? Uh, the water just turned on. Yeah, for so, sure. Go for, for sure. Uh, hey guys, uh, real quick, uh, for all of you who are interested, um, I have a free school server. If you are, um, if you guys are, you know, skeptical, I want to bring your skepticism. One of the things I really love is getting very skeptical guys to come check out my my group and to try to learn as much as you can. One of the most fun things that ever happened to me. Remember, Alex, that first time I came to Miami and we had a Babes in Toyland event there. Uh, one of the guys who was from the, it was like a, the Miami Game Global Group. He comes up to me, he's an Asian dude. And he was like, dude, I fucking hated you. That's what he told me. He goes, I fucking hated you. I watched you on all this shit. And I thought you were just, just a blowhard. And I've been at this event for five minutes and like six girls have already given me their number. And they're, they're so fucking friendly. That was another thing I meant to say. If you guys ever went to the Playboy Mansion, one of the things that's going to happen is that every girl, this is when it was open. Obviously, it's not open anymore. But every girl thinks that you're somebody because you're there. If you're ever on stage at EDC, every girl thinks that you're somebody because you're there and they're so fucking nice to you. They're so open to you because you got into that very hard to get to area. Anyway, he told me, dude, I fucking hate you. I hated you. But I came to this thing and it's like, I, now I get it. So that's what I want for you guys to do. If you don't get what I'm saying, if it doesn't make sense to you, um, I just put it in the chat right there for you. Uh, Alex, do you see it? It's school.com forward slash men of action free, but there's a, a hyphen men of action free. I don't know if you can put that in the chat there. Yeah, Actually, I, can. I think I can put it in your in your PWF chat. Let me see if it'll let me do it right here. I got um, you. Okay, you got it? Okay. Yeah, I got it. Cool. I just posted it right there. If you guys want to join, there's no excuse. All of you guys can come. It's going to give you all the um, the books in my 30 book book list. Which, by the way, shout out to Alex Hermosi. He just came out with his new book, uh, $100 million leads. I'm, I'm going to try to have him on the show here pretty soon. Um, uh, all the 30 books in that 30 book books list, uh, they're required. All the schedule of all the things that we do. We do Instagram audits to help fix your Instagram. Uh, and we also have 
Instagram testimonials. We also have testimonials from all the clients. And most importantly, the first four steps of Men of Action, they're free in a course. Uh, it should take you about a week to get through the course, but it's very, very comprehensive. And if after that, you don't like what you see, then hey, you move on. You know that there's other things you can do, but the course is specifically made for beginners. So if you like that, make sure you go to the uh, free school server. If you don't want to do that, you just want to skip ahead, just go to moamentoring.com and you can join us there. Yeah, man, I think you doing a speed date or uh, and or having your student do it, I think that would definitely go a long way okay. to selling some, some can, people. Can I do a speed date with Kylie on my lap and like we're looking for a unicorn? Yeah, can we do that? Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, can we do a unicorn speed date? I would look very much like to do I would, I would do that in a second. Yeah, yeah, we can try. Uh, okay, Marcus, you're up next. Yeah, I'll just reiterate what I was saying earlier. I think that social circle game is great. You can uh, meet a lot of amazing women from there. You can increase your status. Um, you can set up events and put yourself in an environment that is much more likely to get laid. However, if you're a beginner, it does require you to have a perfect or really good social media that you need to spend a lot of time on. You need to start off by befriending women, setting up and going to other parties, setting up your own parties. It's a, it's a lot of work that takes, I feel like, a longer time to develop the skills that you need. And I think, um, in my opinion, I know Michael will disagree, but I think that uh, if I'm going to learn to get good at something, I don't want to be in an environment where women are going to be nice to me because I might network and actually have other value to give them or because I got girls around them. I would want them to give me real feedback then and there. Do you like me for me? Yes or no? And then moving forward, I think it's a lot better to actually pick the type of girl you want through um, cold approach as opposed to being a little bit more, um, let's say, uh, biased in the types of people that are going to these parties or you know, if you want your girlfriend to continue going to these parties. Um, but uh, otherwise, if you want to learn more about cold approach, I sold my course for $51,000, okay? So- uh, There you go, 51. Oh, let me see, can, is the write off? Can I write it off? Things. I'm gonna take your um, course. Yeah, you can. For you, I'll make a forty nine. Okay, we'll, forty nine thousand. Uh, Fuck yes, let's do this. Um, but uh, yeah, if you if you want to learn more, we have our YouTube channel, which is Ultimate Man Project. We have a sex coaching website, Orgasmic Bliss Coaching, um, and you can join our mastermind. It's free two weeks. You can check it out. And um, if you want to be our friend and in our social circle, you can uh, join up there. Hey, I want right, awesome. to say one more. Well, I want to say one more thing before we go. There is another part we we didn't really talk about it all, at all, and that is networking with guys. Uh, my guy friends never have to worry about shit when they're in Las Vegas because they're my friends. And that's the way it is when I go to Los Miami. My MOA guys there take care of me there. If either one of you came to Las Vegas tonight, there's no club. I wouldn't effortlessly get you in on uh, into VIP. So are there steps you can skip? Yes, that's what a network gives you. I, you can get to skip certain steps by having certain high status people. So I just want to like tell both of you, you guys ever come to Las Vegas or any of you guys who end up joining the free school server, if you guys come to Las Vegas, it's my job because you're part of my tribe to hook you up. It's my job to help take care of you. Because like I said before, it's my job to protect my friends, but not to save them. That's another thing we teach in our program. I know we've talked a lot about getting women, but my program is about networking in general. It's not just a dating course. It's about, again, like all the guys that I, that I, that I work with, that I'm friends with, they never have to worry about shit when they're in my city. And that's what I want you to become if you join, if you join MOA. Cool. I appreciate that, Michael. All right. I think this was a really good debate. We definitely had a quite intellectual discussion. I enjoyed it. I uh, thank both of you for coming on. Tomorrow we are going to be uh, doing a infield breakdown with Gabriel Gray. Thursday we have a panel debate. Friday we have a very interesting debate that I want to give away. But it's going to be with one of the most popular people on Instagram debating destiny. So you guys are in for a treat. I right, appreciate you all and have a good night. Take it easy. Take care. Yes.